Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So welcome to day one of Holy Ghost Encounter. You can sit, you can sit. Holy Ghost Encounter in Houston, Texas. I want you to share this video before we go far. Share it so your family and friends can watch. Hallelujah. Wow, it's so nice. Share, share, share. This is day one. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. I like it. Thank you, Lord. Online folks, let us know how it is. Can you hear us clearly? It's so cute. It's crispy. Somebody clap for these people here, the owners of this place. I love it. You know, I like good things. It's quality. All righty. I have shared it. If there's anything we need to fix online, go ahead and tell us. We will change it. This is loud and clear. All right. Thank you, Lord. Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us today for day one of Holy Ghost Encounter in Houston, Texas. Thank you, Lord, for remembering Houston, Texas. This is where I lived from 20, the year 2000 all the way to 2022, February, when I moved. Thank you for allowing me to come back again. Thank you for allowing me to see my family. Since I moved to Columbus, Ohio, it's only been once that I've come. This will make it two times. I'm so happy to be here. Jesus, have your way. Holy Spirit, use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You are your worship the Lord. You are Yahweh. 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 Alpha and O. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha, no Omega. You are Jesus, you are Jesus, you are Jesus, you are Jesus, you are Jesus. I tell you, Papa. Hey, I say you are Jesus. Hallelujah, Alpha and Omega. You are Jesus. You are Jesus. Alpha, no I say you are.
Let's just worship the Lord. He is Yahweh. He's worthy to be praised. We are here because of him. Let's give him all the glory. All the honor. He brought us here. We are here because of him. We are here to worship him. We are here to give him all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. We are here to fellowship in his presence. Father, take over this place. Jesus, take over this place. Touch everyone in this room, even those that are watching online.
God. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ay 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 pole de le bo shande le bo bo shande Oh yes lord Thank you lord <laughs> Thank you Yahweh Oh ya baba ya baba ya baba Oh you are Yahweh Afa no me ga You are Yahweh Afa Somebody just worship him. We adore you, Yahweh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody just clap for Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. Oh my God. Somebody shout glory. 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 Someone shout it louder. Glory. Glory. You may be seated. Wow. Wow. This is so good. I like that sound they're playing. It's so good. Oh my God. I don't know what happened. Once we started singing that song, it's like something just happened. God is here. God is here. This room reminds me of the studio I had in Houston before I moved. It's bigger, but it just reminds me of being in Houston and having the studio. How many of you were able to come to the studio while I was here? Oh, look at you guys. Aw, you missed it. How many, how many of you are there? Let me see. Come, 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 come out, come outside. Come stand here. Give me a mic for the audience. Come, come, I wanna ask some questions. Come stand. Over here. Dimensions have shifted. Right? Oh, look at that. Now I'm living in Columbus, Ohio. We have two mics? Okay. It's, it's on. All right, sweetie. When did you come to the studio? No, we can use one. Four or five times. It, you want it louder? I think 24 hours, um, it, the, the year end. Wow. I've, I've been, I think, like three times then. When I moved to Columbus, how did you feel? You missed the studio? I do, especially the that small worship room. Oh, man. I you entered there before, too? Yes. Ah. And it you're was like, wonderful. When yes. I first moved to Columbus, how did you feel? You felt like, oh. Yeah, I'm like... But it's the work of God. That's what God wants. But God complain. has made it even better now, right? Yeah, yes. We have a big old land. Yeah. We have a lot of members there now. Yes. Wow. So coming back to Houston is not the same, huh? No, exactly. It's not the same. It's like any other state or city. It doesn't feel like home again. <laughs> I don't want Mama to feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want my parents to feel bad. No, it feels like going to any other state now. Yes. It, don't, it, it really don't feel like Houston. So now, where, where feels like home now? Columbus, of ah, course. Yeah, yeah. Somebody clap for <laughs> Jesus. I was just watching her mouth to see what she was saying. Somebody clap for her. God bless you, my darling. Thank how about you, you sweetie? How, how many times were you? Felicia was there a lot of times, right? I can't even count so I many times. I remember you come for the 24 hours program. Like two or three times. Two, two, we did three there or two? Oh, twice. And once you even led praise and worship, I played the drum there. Yes. How did you feel when I was moving from there? I felt a little sad because it was close to me. I could always come whenever you're having a program, but now I have to get a ticket and come to Columbus. Oh, yeah, you used to drive from Dallas. Yeah, just drive and come. Four hours, like you Four did today. Hours, like I did you drove today. today. Yeah. So when you heard I was coming to Houston, you're like... I'm like, I can't miss this. I want the wave, the second one. <laughs> <laughs> and she was the one that helped me bring the calendars from Victory Media. So all of you will get one in this room. Somebody clap for Jesus. Yeah. So now when you came back this time, how did it feel? It just felt like I'm coming from one of your Holy Ghost encounter out of wow. town. It didn't so even like, though you saw my, my parents, yeah, it still didn't feel like home. It's not the same. <laughs> it did no longer feel like home for you. <laughs> did you almost drive to the studio? 
Not really. Yeah, ah. Because it's, it's Wale now that has the studio. If you go to uh, okay. my office, they go. He told me to come there and do this thing there. I said, no, I don't want to come back there. Because I remember God said she's not coming back here. Yes. She's not coming back to this studio. Yes. So I don't know if that thing still stands. Because I yes. have to do a lot of songs with him. But I'm glad you came. Thank you. And she's going to be moving. You said you were going to be moving soon. Yes. To Columbus. Columbus, yeah. God told you to move, right? Yes. And that's in June. In June, yeah. Wow. And I was like, are you sure God told you? Yeah, you were like, are you sure? I was like, that's why I came to you to make sure it's God. <laughs> <laughs> so look at this. All of us suddenly, we like Columbus that we've never really talked about. I've no. never even done a program there before. You know, one of God, before I moved to Dallas, I had two places to go. I had to Columbus or Texas. I refused Columbus. I refused Ohio. I came to Texas. But now I'm going right back there. <laughs> wow. Me, I've not, I don't even know if I have heard of Columbus before. Because I don't even think I, up to now, I don't think I know how to pronounce it. Is Columbus. it Columbus or Columbus? I don't know. Columbus. So when God showed me that dream, I even did not write it. I said, nah, that's one of those dreams. But I kept looking for a place here in Texas or in Houston near my parents' house. I would see it. Mm -hmm. I would like it. And then I'm like, mm -mm. then I remember the dream. I was sitting in a high place, like in a nice house, glass house. And there were mountains and nice view. And I had a cup of tea. And a boy said, Columbus, Ohio. Wow. Okay. So I didn't think it was anything. Mm -hmm. So when God now flashed that dream, I said, ah, ah, how is it there? So when I went online, started looking for their houses. Ah, oh, no, that's what it's you. I said, ah, ah. <laughs> It's not the kind of houses we have in yes. Houston, Texas. Yes. Houston houses are huge and big, and this ones are old, and it looks like a small, compared to Houston, it's like huge, and Columbus is like small. But I obeyed God, and it's a place of peace. Yeah. There's so much peace there. It's like God just took us from the noise. Yeah, to and peace. And hit us. Yeah. yeah. I love it so much. And that was two years ago, right? Yeah. Was it, when did I move? 22. February 3rd, 2022. And this is April. So two years and... A few months. It's flying, though. It feels mm -hmm. like it was just yesterday. And a lot has been accomplished. A lot. So all of you need to learn from me. When God tells you to do something, no matter how it is, whether do it's it. smaller, it's not the kind you like, just obey God. Yeah. I bought a house, paid off cash, $518,000. Somebody clap for Jesus Christ. And then we bought land for, for the ministry, 585, paid cash. Wow. We've done a lot of programs there. Mm -hmm. We've traveled around the world. I even took some Columbus, Ohioans. I brought them to Houston in a tour bus for um, homecoming. homecoming. I even to Dallas for the award. Yeah. Took them to many places, right? Yes. Even to and London. we fellowshiped on the land, walk, worship, and word for like yeah. a month. Mm -hmm. we've, um, um, we've done a lot of things. We've gone to eat together as a group. Many times, right? Yeah. We've been able to fellowship in the hall daily for how many months? Remember, we had a fellowship hall. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot within a short period. Yeah. Wow. It's home now. It's home. Yeah. And many, many of my members are saying they are moving there. When she told me hers, I said, what if all of you move and I move out of here? No. You guys going to move and follow me? <laughs> I let you say You've said this many times. I say, I don't even know why I'm saying it. I know. When but it gets so crowded, me, I don't run. Pam. But I'm not coming back to Houston. Maybe somewhere else. Who knows? If I mention things, it happens. So I'm scared. I don't want to mention anywhere. Because I go mention one place, I have a dream of that place. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. God bless you. Somebody clap for her. How about you, sweetie? You actually live here. Yes. How did you feel when I moved? Sad. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so you sometimes miss. you pass by the studio. I have come there a couple of times. But when I, I left? No, before you left. you only been there like three times or four, right? About three times. But when I left, did you pass there? No, no. You don't like going through mm -mm. that side? I don't go that side. Chai. You said, I don't go that side. <laughs> Why are you avoiding the place now? Because <laughs> I was coming on those side because of the studio. Oh. Yeah. And how do you feel knowing that she's not coming back like it was sad because like, we are used to you being here you were used to it yes but it's not like you were seeing me you just liked that i was here yes we we knew you were here 
But now, you know I'm fat. Yeah, we can't see you. We can't pass by. You can see pass by now. Somebody's there. But you're not there. <laughs> it's different. Yes. So now as I'm coming here, as I'm here now, how do you feel? I feel good and I prayed for this. You prayed? Yes. Oh, wow. When you mentioned you're going to Florida, I say, Father, bring her here. I need the wave before I travel to Kenya. Wow. Yes. And you have a powerful testimony. Yes. You just received your green card yes. after how many years in America? 21 years. 21 years. Somebody clap for Jesus Christ. It was a difficult case. It was very difficult. But God difficult. did it. Yes. Wow. And you have it in your hand now. In my hand. Hey. Feels hey. Good. My God That's is good. Triple, 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 not triple, triple. Your green card, triple, triple, not triple, triple. Wow, now you can travel. Have you traveled July 15th? Ah, uh, uh, you already have a date. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, so since you came to America, I have you have not left. gone back to your country, Kenya, yeah. right? Mm -mm. 21 years. 21 years. You've traveled within America? Yes. But just not Kenya, no, not, not out of country. Not out of the now country. Now you're going out of country. Yes. Oh my God. Do you have any kids there or all your kids are here? Two of them are here. Right. So you, oh, you, you haven't seen like mom, dad? Mom and dad have been here. My two brothers have been here, but I have not seen one brother. I have not seen my sister. For 21 years. For 21 years. You can't wait. I can't wait to go. Is anybody else waiting for papers to come through? Receive yours now in the name of Jesus. I remember when you used to stress. A lot. And I'll tell you to relax. Yes. And God has done it. Yes. Wow. It shall be permanent. Come on now. It shall be permanent. What the Lord has done for you. It shall be permanent. Permanent. It shall be permanent. Permanent. It shall be permanent. Hey. What the Lord has done for you. It shall be permanent. Your green card that God has given you, nobody will take it from you. Amen. And not only that, your citizenship Amen. is coming. Amen. It'll be sooner than you think. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody clap for Jesus. All right. And I, can Go I ahead, say Sweeney. one more thing, Queen? We met because I met you first before I went to First Prophet Church. And you said something because I came to you and I still have that picture to you today. I came to you and I said, pray for my papers. And you asked me a question. Have your husband filed for you? I said, no. And I knew that was an answer. And he filed for me and that's how everything went through. Wait, wow. So for how many years? How were you getting, trying to do it? Your own way? My own way. But when I asked that question. He filed for me. And that's how you got it? How I got After it. 18 years or 19, 17 years? Um, we have been together since 2014, but because of the history of the filing, the lawyer was like, don't do it like that. He was making me scared. But God kept telling me something, but I didn't understand. We already had marriage license and everything. But when I came to you, you asked me that question. Have your husband filed for you? And wow. I knew I don't that even was remember answer. this. That was yes. God. Yes. And you did it like that? I did like that. My lawyer was like, no, I said, go ahead and These do it. These lawyers now, wow. Yes. And that was it? That was it. So when the woman of God says stuff, it's God. I believe everything you say. I don't even remember that. Wow, I'm so happy for you. Thank you so much. I've been to Kenya recently. Yes. So when you go there, what are your food you guys eat? Uh, that ugali. thing with the white thing. Ugali. 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 Yeah, eat some for me. Don't bring for me. Eat for me. <laughs> God bless you, sweetie. Thank you. Somebody clap for Jesus Christ. Oh, this is my lady. Come, sweetie. This woman has been with me since, what, is it not since 2016 or 17? Put it close so. to your mouth. I think when you first came to a church where we came and they tried yes, to. Yes, it was a church that I went to go preach you. at. That's when you came with a friend. Mommy, I think that was 2016. Mm -hmm. And then that studio. When I used to rent it, you were coming. Oh, Even yeah. with your, yeah. I think your husband. My husband your, came with me at that, at, that, at that time. You've been with me for a long time. And, uh, yeah. and how come you don't get tired of me? Oh, my God. I can't wow. keep me in line. 
the Lord used you to keep me in line. Yeah, praise the Lord. I'm just so grateful. You keep me through you. He, I stay peaceful, and I know that he would do anything but fail. Wow. Glory so when I moved, Jesus. how did you feel? I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this doesn't make sense. I don't even, I have never been on the plane but one time. So Wait, I'm like, you've wow. never what? I've Wait. never been, I went on the plane one time. You, you're from here, right? I'm from here. And you don't fly? I've always been here. You, you're from plane. America here. And you've only been in plane one time? One time. This thing happened? I thought people here, they travel a lot. Mm -mm. So why, you don't like to fly? I love to fly. But you just don't have where to go? I have a lot of places to go. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the problem? I don't know. But um, I tell you, that was a trip of, pur of purpose, bad purpose when I flew. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So when I moved, you're like, that's it. I'm not seeing her again. No, I said I was going to come and move down there myself. Like, <laughs> mama, mama, no, mama, no, mama, no, mama, nobody's telling you to move. Wait, put it close your mouth so that online folks can hear you. The mic. With the mic? Yes. You okay. say your, your family say, no, you don't need to move. No, don't move, mama. Wow. They didn't want me to move. I said, well, y'all all grown, and I know I could be a You want to be close to your woman of God? Yeah. And I thought Columbus, Ohio was a good place, you know? Right. But uh, I needed to get a okay from God, and I didn't I didn't get it. So get it. So when God brought me here too. now, how did you feel here? And I'm, I'm coming happy. Here. I'm happy. I prayed just like she did. You were saying you were going to London, and I said, Lord, please. Let her come here. I'm sure and a lot of people are praying day, for their place. The next day. Uh-oh. The next day. The very next day, I looked online, and you were saying, we're headed to Houston, Texas. I say, oh! Uh, 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 uh. And I say, and you know what I thought about? Apostle, I thought about, it's just nice to have God to talk to you oh. and answer you, you know? You felt like God answered you. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And it's nice. He answered me. But whenever he do it, I don't take it for granted, and I don't act like I'm somebody that he need to talk to all the time. I'm always amazed at when he answers me. Wow. It might be two words or whatever. I was just sitting on God's me. chair in God's room meditating, and I kept seeing the number 444. Four, four. And then he said, read John 4, 44. When I read it, it was talking about how Jesus had said that a prophet is not honored in his hometown, but this time when he went, they accepted him, they received him because some of them had seen what he did in other places. And then I screamed, I'm going home! I'm going to Houston! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Oh Lord! I was so happy. My mom didn't even know. I just posted it while I was in God's room. Mm -hmm. So it was hours later, my mother said, I saw your post, too. you're coming to Houston. <laughs> Right, mommy? I say, yeah, you've seen that? She say, yes. I was shocked. Not knowing somebody was praying. Now, I have a surprise for you. When I was in the house last night, I went to the closet, my, my, my father's room, God's room. My mom has it kept for me. She was playing some of my, you were playing one of my worship that I did in London. And, you know, the place looks nice. And I entered the closet, I prayed, and, and I was just, God was speaking to me there. And then when I talked to my mom, she said, you know, God has a way of answering. I was just here a few days ago saying, Father, it would be so nice to have her here. Mm. To come and spend time here, all of them in the house. See, sometimes I'm surprised how he answers me because I didn't even get a hotel. I stayed with them. We are staying with them. That's, That's exactly good. what she prayed for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When God. she told me that, I was like, wow. And so I'm just saying, you guys prayed. Yes. But she prayed because she's the one that goes in that room, cleans it up, just plays music. Because she says sometimes she just wants God to hear. I don't know. My mom just takes that room very seriously. That's her room now. No, it's not her room. It's, it's my room. room. But she's always there. <laughs> she prays there. So she was like, the way God answers, I'm still amazed. I said, you it's prayed amazing. for that? Yeah. Because I was going to get a hotel room. But then I had a dream. Somebody said, Apostle had a dream. Apostle had a dream. I had a dream yesterday. Mommy, was it yesterday I had that dream? Are you crying? Oh, look at my mommy is oh, crying. Oh, it's so good. I'm telling you. Really. Oh. It's so she really good. missed me, huh? Y'all miss And my mom never cries like that. 
I know I miss them too. But now I was asking God, should I stay in a hotel room or should I stay with them? Because I have my siblings and them. And I'm not saying I'm holier than thou, but it's just, you know, there's a level that I am now. It's like there's some things. So my mom already said, you know, your sister, hmm, she may not stay here because some of you, she said that, you know, some of them are not saved. <laughs> Mommy, that's what you told me. And she, your sister may not want to stay here. So I had this dream when I asked God if I should stay there. And I saw my younger brother, one of them. I have three brothers. He came with a car in front of my house in Columbus. I said, look who came to pick us up. I mentioned his name. And he carried my luggage. He put it hmm. in the back of the trunk. And he was talking to me, like, telling me how he doesn't like to drive at night because of his eyes. And so when I woke up, I was like, oh, you want me to stay there? Yeah, so I told my mom the dream. He was happy. He said, oh, Father, thank you. Oh, thank you. But when I was coming from the airport last night, I still wanted to see if I could get a hotel room near the house. I told the Uber driver, stop here. Because that Uber driver came to meet us while we got our luggage. He was like, come, I take you. I have a, what's the name of that new car he bought? Range Rover, the newest one. Lincoln, something, something like that. That kind of car, I see. I was suspecting that man. I said, Father, I hope this guy don't kidnap us because mm. the car doesn't have the handle to open. You tap. What? I'm like, wait, what if I keep tapping? Nothing is opening. Yeah. And this, <laughs> this guy drives over the car. <laughs> Very brand new. He says 2024. He just got it. And then he was like, it's going to be 230 something to your house. I'm like, no. We pay Uber in Columbus for 60 some dollars. Hmm. But you know, Columbus, Ohio, the airport is like 15 minutes. Here is 45 minutes. Everything is far in this place. Yeah. Columbus, everything is close. So the guy was like, I'll give you a discount, $200. And then he was like, um, I said, mm -mm, no, I want taxi. He said, oh, no, no. So when I entered, I showed him the flyer. I said, I came for this event. He said, wow, then you are VIP. You, you want to fly? Take water. VIP. Before you know, he brought out gum. He said, VIP, take gum. I said, do you have a store in your car? Like, where are all these things coming from? <laughs> I said, no, it's okay. So when we now got to the front of the house, I gave him his 200 and I gave him tip of $40. I said, wow, you are a good person. When my father came out, he said, this is your daughter? She's VIP. She's good. Mm, good. Mm -hmm. I said, because I did you for it. <laughs> but the way God arranged it, yes. his car was so nice. Look at the car that we came in to this place. It's like God just gave me a VIP coming here. And even while the guy was bringing us from the airport, almost 12 midnight, all I saw outside was purple clouds. Purple. This is not even the chair I wanted to buy. I wanted to buy white from the chair company I always buy from. They don't have the one I like. He showed me many. I said, no, no. I'll find a way to shape one of mine there. Mm, no. And then when he showed me this one, God said, that's it. Mm. So I didn't even know it was this nice. So we shipped it to your house. When we opened it, don't you like it? Yes. God so is all up I was to something. Is purple. It's like God is doing a royal mm -hmm. thing here. Yeah. Bringing me back in style. And then I didn't feel like wearing my wig. How do you like it? Beautiful? Yeah. Thank you. You know I know. I know. I know. <laughs> you know how we do it. So everything has just been like peaceful and yes, Lord. it's like, and I told God, I said, I don't want a big venue. I want something small where they have everything set up. Because there's so much work when we have to worry about camera, sound. It costs a lot. So once I finished the London program, because I went on peer space or something to look for venues, this one kept coming into my mind. We messaged them, they didn't respond, but the moment we finished London program, Alexis, were we not in the Uber when the guy responded? Right when we finished, he responded. I say, wow, this is it. Not knowing that Tokba even knows them. Don't you guys like this place? I like it. It's perfect. So God picked this place for me. God just made God everything so everything. easy. Yes, everything is just perfect. So I'm happy to see he you guys. told me to come. Comfortable. Go ahead. I've never been this comfortable before. 
Wow. When I come to a program, you know, I come from the church where you dress up the heels, everything. But you feel so And I say, Lord, you know what? Princess is always telling us to come comfortable, be able to move. I know I'm coming comfortable. Well, you say princess. I did apostle. Queen now. Queen. Uh-huh. You forgot? Come on now. Let's not go back. Let's I go said, forward. Queen. That's right. That's right, Griselle. Say it right. <laughs> I always said for us to be comfortable so that we can move in the spirit. That's and right. So, and you look so good. Yeah, I did. Is this one of the dresses I give at the program? Yeah. And look, I got a stain on the back of it. I need another one. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to wear this. I, I brought white for everybody. Oh, Kaftan for the men. Wash mine. All so right. Don't you see how blessed our ministry is? <laughs> Even the clothing. Your woman, have you, so wait, Gazelle, have you been to any church that have given you clothes? No. For free? Barely food. <laughs> <laughs> even right food, they, they don't even give you food. Hmm. How about money? Well, I'm at one now. That's, I'm at one now that's, that's, that's pretty cool, but, you know, I've, I've never seen what is done here anywhere else. Wow. Never, ever, 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 never. So that's a great witness to the world, you know. Like you say, you're showing how Jesus did it. Right. You know, and he came to give and to serve, and, and that's what you do here. Right. You know, and you hear the voice of God, so you teach us how not to go out on our own, but hear God when he's speaking to us. That's right. You know, and I'm one that I always want to do it later, procrastinate and everything, so you really working with me through what you say about jumping up and doing he That's right. When do, God told you to do, do something, it. just do it. Because it's somebody's blessing on the internet, you know. He can use anybody. He don't have to use me. But he's so loving and so kind to us, you know. Why wouldn't we want to do what he want us to do? This ministry is you know? different. It's a royal ministry. I have family members that need to be set free and delivered. And, you know, and can't nobody do it but him. Mm. So why wouldn't I want to love him for loving me enough to... Help my family, you know, help people. That's right. Let me get out of here. Somebody clap for this woman. I'm so happy to see her. I like when they've been with me for so long, 2016 till now. How many years is that? Almost eight years, right? This year will make it eight. These days it's hard to find people that stay with you, especially if you've been through a lot of persecution. They run with the wind. So if you see them, somebody clap for her again, please. Thank you, my darling. Ooh, that's Meta's sister. I forgot your name. Larissa. Larissa. How are you, my darling? I'm good, thank you. you You're welcome, Queen. Ah. You're welcome back to Houston. <laughs> Have you ever come to Columbus? No. Your sister has come. What happened to you? Why can't you come? School. Oh, I'm back okay. in school, so school and work is quite when busy. When I move, how you feel? Yeah. Um... I didn't feel too good. I wasn't yeah. happy at all because, you know, I was. I knew I was going to miss the moment at the studio, at the studio, you know, coming to worship. Oh, um, you've been there with uh, you. many times. Yes. Uh, I think about three or four times. Are you sure one it's of, not more? Not about three or four, yeah, not too many. Okay. Yeah, one of them was when you had your birthday celebration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I miss those moments, you know, the one-on-one yeah. -on -one fellowship and seeing the angels flying around you. Oh, you've seen them? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yes, Queen. Wow. Yeah. You, you see them again today now? I hope so. Because <laughs> today, like, my eye don't close. So. <laughs> <laughs> Your eye is not seen like before? Not like before. What? Wait, not like before? Not like before, what yeah. Happened? I don't know. You Maybe. need the wave. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so when you heard that I was coming... I was very happy, you know. Yeah, I was very happy. This is yeah. Meta's sister, guys. Yeah. Your sister, she's coming soon, right? I knew she. I know she's gonna come, but yeah. I've been calling her phone for yeah, some time she, now. Yeah. She talk, I talked to her two days ago. Oh, okay. okay. She said, "Mommy, I'm still here. I'm not disconnected." <laughs> I said, <laughs> "I was laughing." Yes. She said, "I've just been busy. School. Yes, yeah. um, sorry, work, Ministry, church. Yeah. And she's doing well with the church. She is, but you know, members are not coming. Yeah, we don't have members. It's just us, the family. Yeah, the members come and then they go. They don't stay. Okay. Yeah." They will come. Amen. After the wave. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory. God bless Amen. you, my darling. Wow. And this is Velma. Hi, Velma, Pastor. you came all the way from where again? Florida. Florida. Look at that. So why do you keep coming? I keep coming because the ministry is contagious. 
<laughs> like you can't watching online and being in the room is different. No, because for the past few months I've been watching. People been getting the wave. I, I didn't come to the last four grand Columbus. You've never gotten the wave. I did. In my at birthday. The, uh, birthday. Yeah. How did you feel after you got it? I felt relieved. I know. I think I stepped back once. I felt relieved. You felt peace. Peace. Like something lighter. Light. And then you came to the studio several times. I've been to the studio three times. Wow. 2019, my first time. Holy Ghost, 24 hours. 24 hours. Program. You guys missed that, right? <laughs> How can a woman do 24 hours program by herself? Sitting on the chair. The last one I did, I didn't in that I didn't go and pee at all. That was hours. that was at the Hilton North. No, no, no. The one before that, I prayed to God that I don't want to use the bathroom. I didn't go for 24 hours. Oh. I, I can't, I don't know if I can ever do that again. Because after the last one, I said that was it. Because normally people have other people on the flyer, and they take a break while somebody else is, but I'm alone yeah. for the whole 24 yes. hours. Yes. Can you do that? No. Because sometimes you guys are sleeping in, how many of you have slept in my 24 hours? You doze up, confess. Me. Look at your hands now. Yeah. Sometimes people sleep. I do. Even the one in front is like. I did. But how you guys sit down and sleep and I don't see you sleeping? Because we're just sitting there and you... You feel like you're meditating. <laughs> so sometimes when I say pray in the tongue, in tongue, <laughs> rogo, rogo. <laughs> hallelujah! <Is> that... <laughs> then we wake up. When you say hallelujah, we wake up. <laughs> <laughs> but me, I'm sitting here, I can't sleep. This is grace. grace. Somebody clap for Jesus Amen. Christ. I don't know anyone that can do that. And the last time I was in the studio, it was when God spoke to you and said you should leave. Oh, you were in that? You were there. Oh. Like, How many of you were in that one? The last one I did, that's how I'm leaving the next two days from there. She is leaving. She's not, She's coming, not coming back. back. You were there. You were there. Who else was there? You, you. How do you feel that day? It was so powerful. It was powerful, but then it's like my heart just like, oh. Sad. But you don't even live in Houston. I know, but that's when I started coming to the program. That's the only place I knew then. I knew I would have to travel to the other state, but it was like, this is home where I know. Wow. That was, I, it knocked me from my chair. I was on the floor. On the floor. Uh, yeah. Me and Barbara were in the front seat. We were very close to it you. It was so powerful. It was. Wow. And I'm here. God has given me the opportunity to come twice now. Every time I have to come, he has to let me come. Amen. So I'm here. Right, Mommy and Daddy? They come to me when they want. Because I haven't seen the whole family like that. So why do you why do you keep coming, paying money to come? I know you say contagious, but there has to be something. I don't know, but I just feel that I have to be mm -hmm. here. Right. And um, I've learned so much here. How can I stay away? And you've been with me how many years? Since 2019. Wow. That's how many? Five? Five years? Yes. And you've learned so much. I've learned so much. I experienced some supernatural. So, and I'm still learning. And now you've been to church before you found me. But this is a different kind of church. This is very different. There is none like this ministry. Mm -hmm. Tell them. Look at them. Tell them. The program I was in, I mean, the church I was in before, I was in the choir also. We would sing twice every Sunday. The choir would sing for two services. Uh, certain days of a special program, we would get food like um, chicken, dinner, and stuff that they would sell for $5. It's not free. We sell it for $5. If you go down to the kitchen area, it's for $5. Uh, we would get, the kids would get candy for Easter, um, the men would get something, sometimes we get chocolate, chocolate bar for Mother's Day, for Mother's Day. And That's special the, offering. The for Mother's Day. Yes. There were so many offerings? Mm, some offering were for a fire Bible. They do fire Bible. Mm -hmm. Fire Bible. Okay. They print Bibles in other languages for other countries. Okay, so it's a help. 
Yes. So, but wow. here you eat for free. We eat for free. We get free clothes. Even this dress I got. Oh, uh, one of my dresses. At Five Days of Glory. My personal dresses. Yes. Wow, I didn't even know that. It's it was cute. brand new. It had a tag on it. It had a tag on it. I buy clothes for myself, and God says, "Give it to them." Have you seen this before? No. At some point, mommy, remember five days of glory? I gave everything I had nothing to wear. Right? And when I was giving them, when they opened them, I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even know that dress was there. That's one of my favorite. Yes. And they don't make it anymore. I have another gown too that I got. It's a bigger one. I don't want to take it to the tailor because I don't want it to touch it. But then if they don't fix it, I can't wear it. It's big, right? It's big. Wow. This, so this is from, wait, come, camera, can you see her? Brand new with the tag. You got this from what program? Five Days of Glory. This is 2021. Yes. Did you get anything from Seven Days of Glory? Seven Days of Glory, I got five dresses. Somebody clap for Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. From one woman. And two t-shirts. And food. And money. How much money you got? I got, I think, 130. That means you didn't even buy any food. You didn't. I didn't buy food. We ate Olive Garden. We had IHOP. We got we had good restaurants. Indian. We I got paid for everything. Yes, we got the Moses dress, the color dress, the white dress, the two T-shirts, and the other two dresses. Wow. This is a lot. Yes. My mother, you know, she knew how much I used to spend. You know, mommy, I'm always planning. To give them, they wouldn't come in here. I made sure I had money in my envelope to give you guys when you dance. Like, I'm just giving everything. Like someone that is about to go to heaven today. You see what I'm saying? Five I'm, dresses from one program. The two t-shirts. Your woman of God, your church, your lady, your preacher. Yes. Shares everything. The word, deliverance, healing, clothes, prayers, food, money, prayers. A time, what does she get? Have you ever thought about it? I always ask, I say, what do I get? Eh? You say, more anointing to give more. <laughs> I'm tapping. Somebody think about that, you said. I give my time, everything. What do I get? I don't get anything but pleasing God, which is the best gift ever, because I'm going to make heaven, right? I don't do this for gain because nobody can pay me really because I don't really need anything. I have everything I need to survive. I have a house, a car to move around. That's enough food in the house. You know, like I don't, I'm not building any secret mansion. I'm not hiding money anywhere. <laughs> when I died a few months ago, I didn't go with anything. It was just me and Jesus Christ. All I was drinking was a frozen drink and I didn't bring it. They made it for me there. And then they sent me back. Everything we own will stay back. If somebody were to die now, it doesn't matter how much you have in your wallet, somebody in the hall will probably get it. Nothing is going back with you. Even the clothes I was wearing, they're not clothes that I've, I've worn here before. I was dressed in a royal gown. But it was heavenly clothing. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't one of my dresses in my closet. But you make impact. Look at that. Look what she's saying. When I'm, even if I didn't come back, this is something that will last for a long time. People will talk about it. Like Jesus really came blended in this woman. Wow. How many of you are wearing t-shirts from me in this room? Stand up, let's see you. That you, wow. You guys, almost everybody, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> What a clap for Jesus Christ. Wow, you may be seated. And that's not, some of you have, how many of you have more than one? If you've been to several, you definitely have a lot. Every year, you probably have more than 10. I even gave you the, the native one I made in Nigeria. I gave, I sent so your, for your husband and your kids. You guys like that one, right? It's cute. Wow. This is making me so happy. I'm doing my job well. I'm so proud of you guys for believing in me and my God and sticking with me. And Because without people, you have no ministry. You understand? Without members, look at this. Anywhere I go, people show up. 
Do you know in London I did a worship um, experience? I saw that. And it was just me and the band that was supposed to be there, but people came. They said, Apostle, we can't hear you in London and not sure. I said, but I just did three days with you guys. You saw them, right? I saw them. I watched. They said, how can you? And then I gave them all $100, $100. And what I had was enough for the number of people there. Perfect. It's like God counted them. And then outside, we did some videos outside that I haven't posted yet. But I'll post it later. Everywhere she goes, she's doing good. Jesus Christ, everywhere he went, he was doing good. So you know somebody that has his spirit from the way they act too and the way they treat people. Do you understand? Jesus is here, blended in me. He's a spirit so you can't see him. But with the works that I do, you can tell that this is God. I don't rape you. Have I raped you before? No. Whenever I ask Alexis that, she's like, no. Because <laughs> false prophets, they rape people. They milk you dry. They lie to you. You've been raped by them. Yes. Oh, yeah, you told us your story. Yes, my father. He was a pastor, right? My father. And he raped you? Yeah. And your father was a pastor. Is, still, is he still alive? I forgot. He died. But he raped you, and he's a pastor, and he's your dad. Yes. Did you hear that, guys? What kind of spirit did he have in him? Definitely not the Holy Spirit. Wow. I used to wonder because he was, when he preached, you know, people used to like for him to preach. I used to wonder. Was it one time? Twice. Did he tell you sorry ever? No. I was very afraid of him. How old were you then? The first time, I wasn't ready... I don't remember which year, but I wasn't old enough to even wear bra at the time. I was very young. Your mom wasn't there? No, my mom left. I was six months old. Okay. So I was raised by family members. And then members. the second time was how old? I was a teenager. And then he would go to church and preach? Yes. And people would be happy? Yeah. They didn't know I was scared to tell people because they probably won't believe me. So when we talk about false prophet, you had a big experience. Yes. I had to say something because I thought this would be something I would die and go with. Because people wouldn't be, who would believe that? You That's know? when you shared your story when I was exposing false prophets. Yes. You guys remember her story online? That's um, Velma. Yeah. Right? Now you see her in person. How did you feel when you shared that story with the world? Oh, I felt like, oh, wait. I could stand on the top of the highest building and say it again. I wasn't afraid or shame, so I felt like I can say anywhere, you know, that shame is gone. You can actually write a book. Even this ministry has helped you guys get a voice. Yes. Tell your story of what you went through. Yes. And he was praying for people, doing all that. He was praying for people. He was doing his thing. Um, as I got older, you know, I began to rebel, so... Um, I started running away and hanging with friends, so. And now you're married to a police officer. Yes. An American, right? Yes. Somebody clap for Jesus. And nobody can touch you anymore because your husband will deal with them. Yes. <laughs> he will lock them up. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but you see, this ministry, you guys have, how many of you have really learned a lot in School of Power? Things that you didn't know going to church. For so many years, you've been to church, but some things you learned here, real life things happening. And one woman was bold enough to expose her former spiritual father, her cousin that is now ex-cousin. These things that I did, God said, nobody can do this. Because people want to be loyal to people. And it caused a lot of attacks, but we learned a lot. And God kept me. God empowered me even more. I am your, I am your David. Yes. And we, we got the Goliaths Amen. out of the way. Amen. They were bullies, bullying us, raping us. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus. Thank you, my darling.
Thank you, my queen. God bless you, my darling. God bless you, too. All right. Come closer. What's your name, Winnie? My name is Helen. You've been to the studio? Yes. How many times? I was privileged to be in the studio during the five days of glory. The Tuesday, you, we came there, and you came and met us there. I can't even remember your face. Yes, because following you has been, it's been so difficult for Be. me, woman of God. I'm so happy and privileged. I knew you since 2016. A friend, by December 2016, a friend introduced me to you to me. She said, Helen, you like to listen to women of God. See, I found this one. So I started following you since that time. But there was a time I was doing the nursing program. So I kind of, um, I wasn't watching the videos like I normally watch because I have to go to class, I have to study. And even before I went for the RN exam, it was the day we were watching you online. I don't forget, and you said, if you have anything that uh, you want God to do for you, write it down. So I was, it was just a few days for me to go for the RON bot. So I just mentioned it on the comment section. And when I go, I went, God gave it to me. Praise so the Lord. I, I resume uh, watching the videos. But you know, when you follow a woman, and I love you so much, but sometimes when you follow a woman of God and some people around you are not um, in support of it, it makes it so difficult. But because I know who you are, I know how long I've followed you, and I said no. It's only God, the day he will call me, that I will stop to follow this woman of God. So people around you did not like that it was a woman that preached, or just me? Yeah, they, you know, um, some people have, I don't know if they are, um, if it is their mindset or their beliefs. They, they, they just tend to be with those type, those old religion churches. That, they say women shouldn't that, preach. No, that like when you go to church, if you are fornicating or you are committing adultery, it's just it, like normal. But when you come to this ministry, you, you see the difference. And I was so happy when my mom came, she was on my side. So I say, Mama, God bless you. And I brought her here with me. I say, you, you, and I was even asking my children, I say, see the woman of God, you always, always watch on TV. Can you believe you are seeing her one on one? So I was so happy that God could make it so I can bring my children to see you in person. I am so grateful. So now there's no obstacle in watching. There is that obsession in worship, but I will not let it happen. To your husband or somebody? Yes. My yes. husband is not into me watching um, stuff like this. So he doesn't believe in me. Not that, I don't, I don't, is, is his mind, I don't know if it's his mindset, mm -hmm. uh, because he believes in God, he goes to church, but he has a mindset that I don't know, but for me, I don't have that type of mindset. So I don't So it's a little hard yeah, when so you're it, married to somebody it, yeah, and the person is it's, not it's really. Re yeah, it's really difficult for me. So you're not able to watch it loud in your house? No, I'm watching it. I'm watching it like the pain I have, I can't really come to programs. Like okay. when I'm like, I want to you come. You live in I wish, Houston? I live in Houston. Were I you was able in to five days of glory. Because I had to push my way. Oh, and yeah, I yeah, said, no. No so, one can. I was telling my mom and I tell my children. I said, no one can stop us. I got, Anything yeah. we have today is on hold. We have to be where the woman of God is today and tomorrow. It's an order. I told them it's an order. It's an order. So yes. you don't care the consequences. Yes. I was telling my children, they are there sitting. And I said, it's an order, it's not an opinion. Eh, I like the, somebody clap, come on now. It's an order, it's not an opinion. Because it all read, read, read. And then if you don't come to program, how are you gonna get your wave? You've been tapping online. I've been tapping online. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying as much as to tap every time online. <laughs> and it's not the same. No, it cannot be the same. Ah. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I beg, what is this? Uh -uh. That's why I say today. Mm. Mm. Tomorrow. I don't even know if heaven wants to come. Let's just come. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> online. I'm sure my online members are laughing there. <laughs> you don't agree again. Mm -mm. Because you know, I'm not even living here. So if you don't come, and we don't even know when I'm and coming and back. I'm a woman here of again. God. Sometimes when I drive, 
I don't know, I get some sort of fear. So when you announced that Houston program, I was so happy. Then I was praying to God. I said, Father, please let the, uh, uh, let the location be convenient. And woman of God, this location is just like in, it's in my house. God is so It's close good. to your house. Very close and the road very convenient. Wow, God brought it for like close to you. Close to me. It's an order. Yes. Meaning if you miss this one, then God mm -mm. can help you again. There was no way. I told my children we'll leave home by one. They were there just passing and passing. The other one said, I'm bringing down my head. I said, you'll carry that head half to the <laughs> You're going to bring your head halfway down here. Yeah, she finally take it out. She was, she was able to finally succeed to take it out of. That's why we came, we reached around. You really made up your mind though? Yes. I made up my mind. I told my mom that you have to follow me. That's right. Because this, I'm not asking, they were talking, I said, it's an order. Mm. I'm not asking opinion right here. And, and even as you're saying this, somebody could be watching this. You don't care? No. Mm. Woman of God, what is in the world beside Jesus? Hey, yeah, Baba. See? Somebody clap for Jesus. If I go now, I'm going to face God by myself. Mm -hmm. you, you already told us. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in this world. Mm -hmm. You're right. You're listening to the so messages. So when it comes to Jesus, I can talk anywhere, anytime. I don't care the consequence. Because Jesus is the priority. This woman, they use the right word. Too. My God. Where is Tokbe? Tokbe, come and fix this in my ear, please. Wow, priority, order, not opinion. I'm so happy for you, sweetie. Cause that's why I didn't know your face. Yeah. So you could be watching me for since 2016. 2016, and I don't even know your face. Can you fix it, please? Wow, I didn't even know you've been watching that long. Cause I was trying I to was, look at I you. I was in the homecoming program. Oh, you came? Yes. That was an order too. Yeah, but that, no, that one I came by my alone because uh, I already had issues. Oh, like I said, Lord, let me just respect myself and go to the program. But this myself. time, you see, you are coming with the whole family. Yeah. And they're all going to receive their wave. Amen. I had a dream. Somebody said, Apostle had a dream. Apostle had a dream. Um, the day I had the dream of my brother picking my luggage, I had, I had other dreams. But this one, I saw a lady from the false prophet church that I took there. Then we didn't know he was fake. And when it was time to persecute me, she joined him to persecute. And this lady was close to me before, even I repented. Right? But it's so sad, you know. She's so loyal to him now. But I saw her come to my program. And when I saw her come, my members were all looking at her like, what is she doing here? She had a blonde, short hair. And she had his tag. You know how ushers wear the tag on their neck? With the badge for the program? And somebody was vacuuming. And she was begging to vacuum. They were all looking at her and say, allow her to vacuum it. So they were all looking at her. Me, I was just smiling. But the tag was still on her neck. The tag of his program. And then she left. And then she came back. I don't know if that means day two. Because it was twice. And then... We all stood, we were doing something. She stood with us and they were all looking at her. I said, leave her alone. So I asked her, I said, sweetie, don't you care that others will see you, that you are here with us? She said, I don't care. Remember I just asked you now? I said, don't you care that somebody will watch? So as I'm asking her that, the dream flashed. I told you the dream, mommy, right? So I was like, hmm. It's almost like people don't care anymore. So you are like an example of what I saw in my dream. Even though the face I saw was somebody else. But as you're talking, it's almost like, I don't care anymore. She's not even here anymore. She's, she's, she's only here for two days. <laughs> if I'm not a part of this, it's going to be over and I'll miss it again. Maybe that's why God had to remove me here. Because sometimes when people see you all the time, they become familiar. Or when they can't see you, or they have to make an appointment, or travel, or spend money to see you, or when they hear you are coming, hey, apostle is in town. I must come. But if I was still here, you knew I was still here, the order may not happen. 
because you will still feel like while well, she's around. Maybe. At least it's good that I didn't move out of country. That would have been worse. If I had gone to a country that is so far, you have to get visa and all that. You guys appreciate what God has given you. And don't let anyone get in the way. You know what you're getting. You watch the videos all the time. Yes, I know. And you love the videos. I love it. You the I laughter. Love I make you guys. I mean, we like when I make you guys laugh. Some people will say they are laughing in their office. And boy, like, what are you laughing at? What is going on? Laughter, the dancing, like a winner, man. Everything is here. And the realness of it. It's so real. I'm telling you stories of how my day went. And it's helping you because some of you are dealing with those issues on that particular day or day before. You're about to deal with it. It's like I'm just telling stories, but I'm actually preaching. Like, look what we did today. I only call people to come tell us how they miss. But we've gotten so much content from this. You see what I'm saying? So I don't really know how the programs will go. I just hold the mic and it's never boring. How can it be boring when Jesus is involved? He's the one that puts everything together. Even them, he's the one that put the words in their mouth. Because what she just said now, there are many people that it's been difficult for them to follow. They do nico nico. You know what that means? They're hiding and watching. But a time comes when it becomes an order and not an opinion. Oh, what? Right? Not an opinion. And this lady just set the pace because that's the dream I had. I asked her, I said, don't you care if people are watching? You have his badge. You are here in my program. She said, I don't, I don't care. I woke up, I was like, Father, what kind of dream is this? It's almost like they don't care if you know that they came to see Belema. No, I, I even announced you like, uh, um, I don't even know, like, you know, in the villages that will be ringing that uh, town crier. That's mm -hmm. where I always announce you. And I, like, the other day I was telling Ines that uh, me and her work, she's from Kenya. When you were there, I always show, share the video with her. Say, look at the woman of God, she's in your country. I even invited her here. She told me she would come after a doctor's appointment. Wow. And I was telling her that, um, because she knows you when you were still the pump uh, when i was a party girl yeah so i said but i didn't know you then i just knew you as a woman of god so when i'm talking she's going to that uh you knowing you are yeah so then i she told knew her, me as a party girl with yes, the legs yes so i told her please you might have known her before but if you hear her name somewhere in a negative form back out mm. don't say a word mm -hmm. it will be for your own good but even when I was in the wall, there was no really negative stuff about me. I was just a party girl. No, I'm just saying because... No, no, I know, I know. Okay. I'm just saying this because sometimes people will make it seem like, I know her now. How do you know me? Was I sleeping with your husband or your man or anything? I was not even... I was just doing parties. People were having a great time. That's it. Yeah. Eh? They will not see it that way. Just like they say they know Jesus. They know him. Nah, ah, no be carpenter. This, you know, I... I was not a criminal. I was not stealing. I was not. I was just making people happy. The same thing I'm doing, but I just did not call Jesus. So I wasn't saying. I used to bring fun to people. Daddy, remember the comedy shows that I do? I think there was one I did on Father's Day. Me and you even danced. We did a father-daughter's dance. It was a lot of people. Almost 600 people. Or Yeah, it was a lot of people. Men, women. I still have pictures from that. I think there were five comedians or four. They laugh, eh? Mommy, you were there, right? Even my lawyer was there. Dignity, the people that, they were there. When I stopped doing that and I became woman of God, one day I went to my lawyer's office and he said, Belema, we miss you. Nobody is doing it like this now. I said, come with me. <laughs> he said, ah, hi, we miss you. Your programs, when you do this thing, it's organized. You give people what you say you will give them. We get what we pay for. You know, like this time it's deceptive advertising. They don't really care about us, you know. I say, why? Well, now I'm doing it for Jesus. Come with us. <laughs> it's fun here. So I wasn't really like that. I was always the fun lady that makes people happy. But I wasn't making God happy. So now I'm making God happy. And you can see God is doing a lot in my life. Yes. Don't you just like how God is working in my life? I love it so much. So much. So much. Mm. One woman Sometimes I wonder. Even with the power. 
even the with anointing. your power, even the way you, you do the things of God, I have never seen. Mm. With style and class. It's and so different. Easy and grace. So easy. The blessings are just flowing. Hi, somebody clap for Jesus Christ. People can see it. God, they do them. People, they see them. Wow. Despite all the persecution, I yes. keep rising. Mm -hmm. You know it's God. I've, I've, yes, I've been there with all the persecution. And you were there all through? I was there all through. Mm -hmm. Even following you to mock. Oh, you, <laughs> you're following me to mock the false prophets? And yes. All. Wow. God bless this lady. Somebody clap for her. You are blessed. Thank you. Wow. Where is, I thought blessing had something to say. Even Heavenly Game, come now. You guys are the main. You, my Ibo Queen lady. I love her. She that you did dance the Ibo Queen dance now for studio. How many times have you been there? More than how many? You can't even remember. Come I closer can't to even, me now. Okay. I can't even count. Is because I live in Houston, she's 17 minutes away from me. So. 17 minutes in yeah. the studio. Mm -hmm. This one too shouldn't be that far. This one is like 29 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when I was leaving, hey. I didn't go home until 2, <laughs> 2, 2 a.m. before I got home that day. Yeah, you because went the hall that day. Out. Yeah, from the hall, we went, we went to, to IHOP. Mm -hmm. You, you couldn't gave believe me food it. and told me to give your husband. Tell him to eat this one too. Oh, I bought food for your husband too. <laughs> that Aww. Day. See, see how they care for you. <laughs> he wasn't there, but he gave you food too. How did he feel too when I moved? He said, yeah, your, your mother is going. I said, I'm going. <laughs> 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 is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, he just felt different, right? Yeah, very different. You pass that place sometimes? Yes, I do. And I, there's a lady that has a. Um, like a company that I go there and sometimes to work for her. So I there's a company in that complex. Yeah. Oh, so you actually go to the complex? Mm hmm I do. The studio is there now. I know. Uh -huh. I go that side too and I look and I say, Ooh. you just look at like, mm -hmm. <laughs> of course it's not here. Yes. It's but you have so. been to Columbus. Yes, I have been there like I think three times. I think yeah. you even brought your kids once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I brought wow. my son. My daughter was in school. Yeah. So when you heard I'm coming again. Hey. Nothing is gonna make me to miss now, unless I'm not in Houston. He said we did, we did come, <laughs> we are ready. Yes. And you've been with me for five years. 2017 September till now. That's seven years. And you were Catholic. Anglican. Anglican, sorry. Mm. And you're um, not used to Mr. this Pentecostal. No, Mr. Leco is my no church. <laughs> the then. Over there. Yeah. 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 The Anglican church we go to. Look on the Anglican guy. Uh -huh. Oh, wow. So this one is Pentecostal. Yeah. It's different. Yes. Oh, back then, um, back in Nigeria, I go to Pentecostal and uh, I go to one man church. That's what we call it there. So I'm used to it. What is one man church? Pentecostal? Yes, Pentecostal. Anglican is community church. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I like that. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what they call uh, Pentecostal, one man church. One mm -hmm. man can open a church. Mm -hmm. But the Anglican no, is like community, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, they pick who will be pastor. Yes, they and pick, all yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's what you guys were going. So then your daughter became one man church. <laughs> wow. And you like this ministry, why? <laughs> I'm like this, that I'm here, and that I, whatever I am is um, Queen Belém's ministry. I can sit out there and talk about Jesus. I'm proud of what I'm doing. Yeah, you're a woman of God now. Somebody clap for Jesus. So, it all came from uh, Queen Belém's ministry. That, the, the, that fear, you know, what people are going to talk about you. I don't care what you're going to say, but I know my Jesus. And, uh, and your I husband know. is very supportive. Yes. Like, that Anglican, he's the Bible study teacher. Wow, okay. Yeah. And I was pushing him. He doesn't want to go for but I push, I push. And, uh, I, I demand steal. <laughs> 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 it's good to have support from your husband. It makes ministry coming to church easy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm happy to see you, sweetie. Thank you. Mom. You are blessed. Amen. Blessing, come on now. Let's hear from you. Right? And you live in Houston. You actually moved to Houston. Yes, I live in Did Magnolia. you ever come to the fellowship at the studio? Once. You moved from Nigeria to here? No, no, from Dallas. From Dallas to here? To Conroe, then to Magnolia. 
I'm and then an you moved to Houston. No, no. I live in Magnolia. Where's Magnolia? An hour from here. Okay. So when, when you were in Magnolia, you felt you were closer to Apostle? Yes. And then Apostle went to Columbus. Ah, yeah, yeah. You're like, what is going on? Well, you've been to Columbus. I know you were there at 11-11. 11-11, um, Seven Days of Glory. Seven Days tenth, of Glory. Seven revival. Days of Glory. Okay, yeah, yeah, recent one. And the 10th Revival. And what do you like about the ministry? Put it close to your mouth. So many things. The ministry is different. There's no mm. ministry like this ministry. God has done so much. God has changed my life through this ministry. Mm. I've been an Amor bearer to ministers. So if I say this ministry is different, this ministry is different. I started my ministry in this ministry. Yes, you have a ministry too. Come yes. like clap for Jesus. These women are doing great things. Yes. Thank God I'm happy God. to see you. So when, I, when you heard I was coming here, you're like, hey. I was so happy. My children actually prayed. Oh, uh, your daughters? Yes, my daughters. They prayed for me to come. Yes. Oh, really? that's why when they saw me, they were so happy. Yes. God bless you, my darlings. It is well with you. Amen. Somebody clap for Jesus. Wow. It's good to hear from them. This is home before. But is this still home? Because I have a home now. Mommy. Oh, they said they were struggling to hear them. Please put sound in the... Is my volume loud enough? You guys can hear me? Huh? Is there people in the overflow? Not yet, right? Okay. Online, can you hear them? All right. So let me read um, a scripture of what God, what gave me this, um, how I got this assignment to come here. John 4... I kept seeing 444. 4, 4. John 444. 4. All right. But when I read it, he told me to start from 43. The New Living Translation, it says, at the end of the two days, everybody say two days. That's how I knew I had to do this for two days, Saturday and Sunday. Jesus went on to Galilee. I love that man of Galilee. He has done so very much for me. Right? You know that song, right? So he went on to Galilee. He himself had said that a prophet is not honored in his own hometown. Right? He himself had said that a prophet is not honored in his own hometown. You know what that means? A prophet is not honored in his home hometown. Um, I'll read it in several translations because I studied it in several translations. Meaning previously he had said, made this comment, right? But now he was going back to his hometown. Yet the Galileans welcomed him. For they had been in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration and had seen everything he did there. They welcomed him this time around. As opposed to the first time he went home after he got anointed to start his ministry. Then they were deeply offended. Because they were wondering where he got his wisdom from. They were wondering where he got wisdom from, power from. Like, is this not the same guy that we know? Uh-uh. We know his sisters and brothers now. We know his mother, and, right? But this time was different. They welcomed him because they had seen what he had done somewhere else. In the case of this ministry, it's an online ministry. So even if some people had not really traveled to some of the places that I've been to, they've watched online. And they've seen how God has been using me in many places and how people respect me all over the world. And they're like, wait, we are here in Houston. Like, this lady is like, this is not an opinion. This is an order. Like, she's coming here. I'm, I'm going with my whole family. This is not like those days. It's part of welcoming me because she's not caring anymore what happens. Do you understand? 
So they, they, they respected him. They welcomed him this time around because they had been in Jerusalem at the Passover celebration and had seen everything he did there. So now I'm going to read it in another translation. The MSG translation, it says, after the two days, he left for Galilee. Now Jesus knew well from experience that a prophet is not respected in the place where he grew up. So when he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, but only because they were impressed with what he had done in Jerusalem during the Passover feast. Not that they really had a clue about who he was or what he was up to. You know, MSG always have a way. Now, people may have seen, like now God has given me an anointing to wave at people. And they're like, wait, where is this whole wave thing coming from? Before when she was here, how many of you were in the era of me um, letting people touch my feet? I don't know if anybody here was opportune to touch the feet. You did? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. How about when I was sprinkling water? <laughs> All of you experienced that. Have I sprinkled water in your eye before? That they say it's chemical and pouring in your eyes. Right? How about when I say buckets of fire? How about chop it off? In Jamaica, in your Gabriel, chop it off. Come on. Wow. But now, like this, this is different levels. How many of you were around when I used to do one-on-one -on -one after a program? The next day I would do one-on-one, -on -one, people would fill up the room and I'll pray for people one by one. Ah. There was one time I did it for 18 hours, I was praying for people. People were like, woman of God, you're still on? Apost eh. Then I was an apostle. Oh my God, you're still praying for people? It was hard. It's like slavery. I was slaving. Come out of her. Leave her alone. Come out. Of her. Right after a 12 hour program, or maybe three days of 12 hours, and then one day after that, the room will be full with people. I will pray for one, one person. How? Oh. Okay. But now, how many of you saw the London program? You saw the way back. I had a dream, actually two dreams to be in London. It wasn't a lot of people, but the ones that came, they're still testifying till now. Somebody clap for Jesus Christ. So there's no way you will see all of this, and then you hear she's coming here, and you won't take advantage of it. So Jesus went home, and this time the reception was different. This is the scripture that God gave me. And that's how he told me to come to Houston. Because this time is different. All the sin and all the negative things, those periods don't end. They are tired of talking. You know, you get to a point, you're like, this one belongs to God. This one, God is with her. This one, because when I moved from Houston, people did not know what to expect for me going to Columbus. But I feel like I went from glory to glory, right? It just got better and better. Like anywhere I go, I succeed because I go with God. I'm not alone. Somebody clap for God, please. Did you know how I traveled to Houston? Um, Columbus from Houston? We drove. God told me, you guys heard that she will leave. She will move to Columbus, Ohio. You heard it. On the 3rd. That day was the first of February. But you guys did not know how I was gonna go. Drive. The highest I've done is going to Dallas from Houston to Dallas, four hours. This was 18 hours. And they said 3 a.m. in the morning. We did not know that in a few hours there will be ice dropping in Houston. This is something that never happens. When we left, God said, I can't turn back. If I leave my purse, I will leave it. Somebody will mail it to me, but I can't come back even if I forget something. My mom was outside the garage, folded her hands, looking at us while we we're entering the car. 259, you started to hug me, or 258. But the hug was taking long. I'm like, mommy, it's almost three o'clock. I gotta go, right? And my mom was like, <laughs> so I entered the car. I still remember that day. Bye, Houston. My mother just did the garage, stand like this. They look, increase the volume. I want to hear that keyboard. 
My mother just do like Bye. I'm going to Columbus. Mommy, you were in the garage front till we drove off. You watch all the drive off till you didn't see our car again. 3 a.m. in the morning. 2022, February 3rd. Two or three hours after we had driven, my mother called me. To Belema, God really speaks to you. If you had not left at that time, you won't be able to leave because ice is all over. And they're telling people to stay home because you know ice causes a lot of accidents. You won't even know it's there. <laughs> Your car will just... And I think they, were, they even can't to school that day. I don't know if there was school that day, but... You say, you, you really hear... Mommy, you said, you say, you really hear God. If I had said, let me even fly and take plane. That day, all flights were what? Canceled. Now, going to Columbus, they had the worst weather that same day. They canceled school. There was snow, ice, rain, wind. So where I was living had ice. Where I'm going had all of it. And God said, do not stay in any hotel. Just keep driving. I only slept for two hours. Mommy, you remember? Because I used one day to run all my errands. Do you see? And it's 3 a.m. It's not like it's 10 p.m. at night. It's to me 3 a.m. See, like day two, <laughs> two second, because it's just three hours after midnight or three hours. But I obeyed God. It was dark. The weather was not favorable. But I just obeyed. I don't know why I was living like that. Like running away or something. We didn't, how many boxes did I have? My son, me, my former keyboardist. I only had my long dresses, right? I didn't have anything because I gave away all my clothes. And now the studio, my workers moved it later, right? I didn't have a hotel to stay. I didn't have a house to stay in. I didn't have, all I know be say, God say, you gotta go. And I can't come back because the weather is not good. Where I'm going, they're like, this is a four-headed beast. Stay home. <laughs> but God is like, go. When I want to sleep in the car, I say, wake up. You have to stay awake for him, the driver. But when I wake up, the guy is fine. Before you know, he was dozing off. He, he said, um, he wasn't dozing off. He said, my please, can you put water in my hand? I said, for what? He said, for my eye. I'm sleepy. I said, uh-uh. When did you start getting sleepy driving now? Like, I told you to go and sleep early so that I can. I said, oh my God. You know, now we are seeing all the success that came from it. But then there was no success from it. It was just a move. That was like a suicide mission. And I took my son with me. And another person's son driving on ice, snow. My car did not have ice tire, uh, snow tires because we bought it here in Houston. I didn't even have a jacket. <laughs> Just a long dress like this with my one scarf. An 18 hour drive took 25 hours. How many of you can obey God like this? Something would have killed me here if I hadn't gone. I don't know what it was. Because this is where the false prophet that I exposed leaves. I had dreams of him coming to my studio one night and dancing like this with a blue G-string. I woke up, I told you. That same day, my AC in that area where he danced broke that whole unit. We had to spend thousands to fix it. These are new ACO. My dad has had dream. We've seen him pour like, I think it was a pink and green substance outside our house. And in the dream you heard for us to use four minutes water. So I'm here doing a difficult assignment, exposing a false prophet that knows our house, that knows where my office is. We don't know why God took me out like that. But it was to save my life. I would have been trapped in that day. Can't fly. 
can't go there, can't drive, but I left before that. One place we traveled that night, Michael, you remember? There was this thick black cloud that filled up this place that traveled. Michael, you remember the cloud? I've never seen that kind of thing in my life. It traveled, even when we're passing, it passed our car, right? This was around 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning. Like that area felt weird. Big, thick cloud that will fill up all here. It was traveling black. It's like demons traveling at night. We saw things. We even got to a place where it was pitch black. No light. Only snow. Snow like this. Nothing. You can't even see anything. Suddenly, three big trucks came. Trailer. Identical. And they took overtook us. They were speeding. I told my driver, follow that. Follow them. For over two hours. Until we got to where there was light and light. God. Do you know what I mean by pitch dark? No street light. Like you don't even know the car before you. <laughs> you don't know if there's an accident and the car stopped. Because you're coming on a freeway now. Because I don't travel at night, so I don't really... I'm an aeroplane person. But God saved me. God took me safely. Our wiper, we had water coming out of the car. We will wipe it because there's snow now. The moment we enter Colombo's water finished. It was almost 4 a.m., like 3 something in the morning. So we were just wiping, but no water was coming out. And Columbus, they did not remove the snow at all. It was full. We drove on snow. By the time we reached the hotel, because God even told me a hotel till when we were close. When we reached the hotel, we couldn't see again. Did we not get bottled water when we came down to pour? Somebody clap for Jesus Christ. <laughs> The journey but God led me there and God was with me even the jacket that I have you can see the jacket after we drove for so many hours I complained to them in the car I said all of you have jacket I don't even have a jacket I thought we'll be able to get there on time so I can stop at their store I said now how am I gonna do it's so cold what am I gonna wear 10, 15 minutes later, we saw a gas station. That was our last stop before we entered Colombo. So they went to go pee because I always want them to check out the toilet. If it's not clean, I don't use it. I'm very picky with toilets. So when I came down, just a long dress like this with a light scarf that. As I entered, this woman greeted me. She said, your dress is nice. I was going to the toilet. I said, thank you. She followed me to the toilet while I entered one of the toilet stalls of the room. She waited by the tap where you wash your hand. Waited for me. She didn't use it. When I came, I was washing my hand. She said, you need a jacket. I said, um. She followed me outside. She said, you need a jacket. Come with me. White, tall lady, chubby. It's like a mission was to give me a jacket. And I didn't know they sell jackets in gas station. That was my first time. Seeing a gas because here in gas station here in Houston, I don't know they sell clothes, right? No, be candy you pay for gas. So she had the same jacket on. So I thought she walked there. She she was looking. She couldn't find it. She now asked one of the cashiers, "Where is this jacket I'm wearing?" They said, "Oh, it's on that side." So then I knew she didn't work there. So when I went, she said, "Your size is three X." And me, I want to lose weight. Did you did? I still want to lose weight. I said, "Um, no, that's too big." He said. Your size is 3X. Try this one that I'm wearing. I never wear people's clothes. Eh? Me. Very picky. She removed her jacket. All her hand was pink, like rashes all over. So I look at her and she say, don't worry about my hand. Just wear the jacket. I say, hmm, okay. I, I, don't, I don't know what this person is. I was like, who is this person? I wore the jacket. I felt so warm. It was my size. He said, that's your size. I said, I want to lose weight. This one is too big. Maybe two X. He said, okay. So I wanted to touch it. She said, no. I 
get it for you. She took her time. This is 2X. I said, thank you. When I took it to go pay, she stood by the door. She was looking at me like this while I was paying. When I feel the pain, I was only walking this person, <laughs> you know, like. So when I got to the door, she said, bye. She waved at me until she couldn't see me again. So when I entered the car, Michael, remember I just threw it in the back seat. A few minutes later, I said, there was a lady that made me buy a jacket. I even tried a jacket. I said, oh my God, oh my God, wait, wait, wait. Did I not just say you guys that I do have a jacket? Oh, how did she know that I didn't? <laughs> she didn't even let me touch it. I said, Father, if this is an angel, show me. Immediately, I fell asleep. <sighs> Once I slept, I saw God fold the white, the white dress I gave you guys and give it to me. I said, oh my God. Oh my God, that was good. They gave me that jacket. It's a mantle. <laughs> That's why I wear it everywhere. Ha! I don't play with my jacket. Don't you? If whenever I wear that jacket, I feel like program has started. Don't you guys see as a signature? That was our last stop till we got to our hotel. God even gave me a jacket. Anything I complained about, somehow it was taken care of on that trip. Twenty-five hours on the road with snow, ice, rain, wind no accident there was one time the car skid round and there was a big trailer coming with speed behind us and another car here when it go around I say Shabala, bala, bala. it's like everything freeze around us Michael wasn't the trailer behind us coming in speed yeah I don't know how he didn't hit us Shabala, bala, bala. it's like everything freeze like time freeze because our car went like this. <laughs> I'm like, Father, I know people will think I'm crazy, but it's you telling me to go, right? And I made it. Somebody clap for God. It's like I was running from something. It's like, they, and nobody knew, except for my mom. My father didn't even know I was driving. My father traveled to Africa. Daddy, I showed you the video when I landed in Columbus. He said, what? You moved? I said, Daddy, I didn't want to tell you because I know you act like this. He said, you would have been there for me to come now. I said, no, Daddy, God said I had to go now. He was sad. He said, how is it? You know, my father really cares about me. How's the weather? How is it? What of Michael? Why didn't he at least stay to finish school? Because school was soon finished for that semester. I said, God wanted me to take him. My father was sad. How you going to come back from a long trip and your daughter is not home? She moved. You come back to an empty home. Because I'm very noisy in the house. Even when I pray in tongues. I don't know how to pray for my mind though. It starts like, so like today I was praying in tongues. And my mother, when I finished, she said, it has started. <laughs> that my siblings, they were asking, will I stay here? She said, you know, your sister will not stay here. And <laughs> they said, well, yeah, because you know she can be loud. And my mother said, well, did I not tell you guys to enjoy her while she was here? Did you guys miss her when she left? Everywhere was quiet, right? So today when I started praying, she was like, mm -hmm, thank God. So when I finished praying, I said, mommy, I don't know what happened to me. I believe... I'm praying to cleanse you guys' house. You say, it's good. As I was just saying, so I started let them hear, all of them, if you hear it. Loud. I prayed. Today is like something just happened. I prayed. God, God loves me so much. When I went into the closet yesterday, because when I first came, I was sitting downstairs in the living room on my favorite chair. And I was like, I don't know why I'm not led to go to my prayer closet. I said, maybe I won't go there today. Suddenly, I started feeling fire on my legs, right? And things started choking me on the chair. I said, uh oh, I gotta go. So when I went, I sat on the floor in the closet. And I started worshiping God. I said, Father, this is where it all started. And then I heard a scripture clearly, Isaiah 43. 
So I read it. When I came down, I said, I read it to my parents too. So I'm going to read it for all of you. Isaiah 43. I heard it clearly like a man was standing beside me, waiting for me to come in there. <laughs> I'm going to read it in NLT version. It said, but now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. This is a word for all of you here too. Even those of you watching online. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, when you go through snow and ice and wind, I will be with you. God is promising you this. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's like, it's like God just was waiting for me to come and so he can give me this. Let me read that part again. Verse 2. When you go through deep waters. Let me read that in King James first and I'll come back. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Now I can go back to NLT. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. God gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. Meaning, he fought for you. We should not just think of Egypt and put it, personalize it. Do you understand? I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me. You are honored and I love you. Mm. God loves us so much. My God. Do not be afraid for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from east and west. I will say to the north and south, bring my sons and daughters back to Israel. From the distant corners of the earth, bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Bring out the people who have, who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. Gather the nations together. Assemble the peoples of the world. Which of their idols have ever foretold such things? Which can predict what will happen tomorrow? Where are the witnesses of such predictions? Who can verify that they spoke the truth? But you are my witnesses, O Israel, says the Lord. You are my servant. You have been chosen to know me, believe in me, and understand that I, I alone am God. There is no other God. There never has been, and there never will be. Ah, yes, I am the Lord, and there is no other Savior. First, I predicted your rescue. Then I saved you and proclaimed it to the world. You know, I'm not putting Israel here. I'm putting my name here. He predicted my rescue. He saved me and proclaimed it to the world. No foreign God has ever done this. You are witnesses that I am the only God, says the Lord. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. Somebody shout hallelujah. Verse 14, he said, this is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sakes, I will send an army against Babylon, forcing the Babylonians to flee in those ships they are so proud of. I am the Lord, your only one, Israel's creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making a dry path through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all his chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned. Their life snuffed out like a smoldering, smoldering candle wick but forget all that oh i'm gonna read verse 18 and 19 in king james and i'll come back 
Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the, world, in the desert. So now I'll read it in NLT. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. God is about to do a new thing in your life. Receive it in Jesus' name. He says, see, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. The wild animals in the fields will thank me. The jackals and owls too. For giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers in the dry wasteland. So my chosen people can be refreshed. I have made Israel for myself. And they will someday honor me before the whole world. But dear family of Jacob, you refuse to ask for my help. You have grown tired of me, O Israel. You have not brought me sheep or goats for burnt offerings. You have not honored me with sacrifices. Though I have not burdened and worried you with requests for grain offerings and frankincense, you have not brought me fragrant calamus or pleased me with the fat from sacrifices. Instead, you have burdened me with your sins and worried me with your faults. Ah, yes, I alone will blot out your sins from my own sake, for my own sake, and will never think of them again. Let us review the situation together. And you can present your case to prove your innocence. From the very beginning, your first ancestor sinned against me. All your leaders broke my laws. That is why I have disgraced your priests. I have decreed complete destruction for Jacob and shame for Israel. So this is what I heard when I went into God's room, the closet where I got anointed since 2016 till I moved and it's still there, the room in that house. Only my mom goes in there. I heard it clearly. I read it. And when I came downstairs, I told my parents, I said, while I was praying, God gave me Isaiah 43. And I read the whole thing again before them. And he told me when I come here, I need to read it. God has been with me. God is the one that brought me here. Even through the snow, the ice, the rain, the wind, God was with me. Through the whole persecution time, God was with me. Through the false prophet that was just a few minutes away from the studio I had, 10 minutes away, from my house 15 minutes away, I had no fear and I did the assignment. I exposed that man for his evil and wickedness. God has been with me throughout that assignment. God has been with me in many countries that I've gone to. People have tried to kill me in countries because God, he just said it to his disciples. That when he sends us out, we need to be as wise as serpents. We need to be careful because he's sending out, out to people that may want to kill us, that would want to kill us. I recently went to Kenya. And when I went to Kenya, I was so sick. I was so sick. It made no sense. I almost died. It was so bad. And God wanted me to do a revival. But I was sick very sick. In fact, on one night, and we were doing 30 days fast, I still had to come online daily to preach to you guys. One night, I locked my door in the room, and the voice was like, now that you lock your door, if something happens, how will Alexis know to come in? I said, well, whatever happens, happens. And I never got up to open the door. It's like, death was calling, but I'm not really afraid to die because I've died before and I came back. But I was sick. But there was something that happened. The lady that was helping me told me that my Airbnb that I got, that another lady that is also a part of the ministry helped her to get it. I said, why? I found it and I told you to go book it. Why are you working with other people? My spirit grieved. I said, you know, I'm very picky with who work with me, especially for where I stay. I had a dream, an angel came and showed me a place, and I woke up and I found the place, and I told you to go book it for me. And now I'm hearing that other people were involved in it. So I asked God, I said, Father, why am I, have, why am I feeling like this? And God showed me a dream. And I saw this lady. I saw her using Alexis, my worker's eyes, to see in the dream. And in real life, she can't really see well because she's trying to do surgery for her eyes. But in the dream, she was using her eyes to see like a torchlight. 
And I woke up and I told that lady helping me. I said, this is the dream I have that this lady. I said it in Kenya, but I didn't mention who the person was. It troubled me because that's witchcraft. So when the lady messaged me one time telling me I'm sorry for what happened in Kenya, I said, sweetie, I had this dream of you. Why were you using somebody's eyes to see? She said, I don't know what it is. I said, sweetie, something is not right. You guys try to kill me in Kenya. I found out two days ago that she was also part of the people that got my first place where I stayed and I was sick in that place too. I said, well, something ain't right and God's going to deal with all of you. I had a dream. Some people in Kenya came before God and I was there. One lady was limping and came. She said that she's sorry that when I came to Kenya, all she came for was the bread and the milk. Because I fed them eight days out of ten. Thousands of people. So she only came for the food. She was not really getting the message. And then another lady came. I remember her. She said, how about us that welcomed you from the airport that touched you? She used the word touched you. I said, if you don't confess and repent, all of you would die. I told you guys that dream. That lady was among the people that were coming from the airport. So now, when I was in London a few days ago, on Tuesday, as I was preparing to go for the worship experience, I got a message from one of my members that that lady is dead. She woke up, had a cardiac arrest, and just died. I was sad. Because she would have confessed and repented. They almost killed me. You know, I gave somebody $4,000 two weeks ago at the Easter. Because she said she was waking up for one hour every day for almost four weeks praying for me while I was in Kenya. God has always been with me. I was supposed to die there. That's why God did not allow me to go again the second time. He stopped me at the airport. Why am I saying this? This work is very dangerous. You don't know what we go through. Going to territories, even those working for you, the one working for me, I spent over $100,000 there. That lady was using my money to buy land and giving to her boyfriend and doing things. I'm not like other pastors that come and start raising money for things. I pay for everything. I make people happy. I paid for their bus fare. I paid for their food. I even gave money to people off the street, send people home back to their family. Even the homeless boys are not even truthful. People were not really getting saved or wanting to know God. They just wanted my money or my food. Only a few received. So one of my other members messaged me. I said, sweetie, um, I saw that lady like this. Did she tell you? She said, yes, she told me apostle. I said, so what did you tell her? He said, I told her apostle's dreams are very deep. Are you sure you're not? She said, no, she doesn't know anything. Now let's just pray to God for mercy. I said, what? what is she praying for mercy for? Her? She needed to confess. She said, but the lady told her that her uncle's a wizard, grandmom, Step grandmom is a wizard, a witch, and they have so many witches and wizards in their family. She's an orphan, no testimony in her life, always sad stories. And she was just praying to God, asking, I don't understand. Do you want me to go for the burial? And now Apostle is messaging her like this. I said, Are you sure you're not with her? Because if you are, repent. Because everyone that touched me when I was in Kenya, my God would deal with them. God always fights for me. So when he gave me this scripture last night in his room, it was emotional. Like I was kind of emotional because I've been to territories that are dangerous and I've come out alive. People that I trusted that I worked with, turned out some of them were like 
agents. Some of them were just after my money. And I'm so generous to them, but they don't care. They say they are part of school of power, but they just want something. Only few are good. Some of them are witches and wizards. I started rejecting that room and I didn't know why. Later, I found out that lady did not come to that room to book it by herself. She came with her boyfriend. I felt like they did something in my room. Do you understand what I'm talking about? They probably even laced the room with some voodoo. That's probably why I was so sick. But I came out alive. Somebody clap for God. That's just an example. God has been with me everywhere. Sometimes my mother will remind me of what God promised me in 2016 when I first started preaching. He came to my room when I was sleeping. He said, I will go with you wherever you go. And I will fight for you. November 2016. I even preached about it. So whenever things are like this, my mother will say, remember what your father told you. Remember he promised to fight for you. I've held on to that promise. How can a, a woman, one woman, be so highly protected like this? If it's not God. So when I read the scripture, he said he's with me. Even if I go through all these things, they won't get me. And he will deal with everyone that touched me. And I'm like, Father, I don't know why you're giving me the scripture here that I came to Houston. Even the false prophet, he has boasted and told his members, don't worry, see, you will see, she will go down. <laughs> I'm going higher, higher, higher. Because Jesus doesn't go down. Jesus goes high. Higher, higher, higher. Higher, Jesus, higher. 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 Lower, lower, lower. Lower, Satan, lower. Lower, lower, lower. Lower, Satan, lower. Lower, lower.
Red Bridge. Come on now. Are you guys ready?
Don't worry, we'll do another one. We'll do another one. Yes. You may be seated. My God, I always have fun with these things. Wow. Thank you, Lord. That was so good. Somebody clap for Jesus. Mommy, I didn't know you could jump like this. You say you can jump higher. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was so much fun. Oh my god. Oh my, did you guys enjoy that? <sighs> I always bring money to come and bless God's children. We have fun with it. And we'll go do it again tomorrow. Before you know, we have finished here. Wow. Did you guys enjoy it online? I know they are dancing in their house. Dance here, dance here, dance here. Wow. When your parents, even the children, can enjoy themselves. Those two girls, they wanted to dance. Come, you and your sister, come. All right, are you ready? Dance here. Come, you and your sister, come and dance. Dance here, dance here, dance here. Oh yeah, come. Come. Oh yeah, face them, face them. Come closer, come closer. Come closer to me. Oh yeah, show me what you got. Face them. They say you prayed for me to come. Eh? I say, dance here. Dance here, dance here, dance here. Dance here. Eh? Ha, 
you go and sleep, it will appear in your dream. So let's just do this thing for them because they were ready to show us their moves. Hey, look, we can't fix this thing. I don't know this thing. This thing is doing his own dancing. Wow. Thank you, guys. That was so good. Everywhere I go, we make them dance like this. This thing, wow. Hey, I have to get ready for all these big, big screen. You know, they plug things on their body. They connect things in there. I see Joyce Meyer, I see all of them. But my only they stay. Because <laughs> I'm dancing too much. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Talk me. Play that beat. Talk me, dance here. You leave the new scene, you move. You moved from here. Ah, yeah. You came back with me. Come on now. Come on. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. He used to live here too. He moved to Maryland. Wow. It's good to be back home. This is just a warm up. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. That was good. You guys are always on the standby ready, eh? Where is that our song? Calabari song. Eh? I don't know if they know how to play Bo 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 Tamo no Bo. Tamo no Bo. But is he a dancing song? You know it. Samuel Nobo. Talk about come play drum. Bo. Is my voice good for that one? Bo 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 Samuel Nobo. Bo 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 Samuel Nobo. Samuel Nobo. Bo bo. Mommy, this is our town dance, no easy. 
How many of you did this video for this dance? It was hard, right? Somebody clap for my parents. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I was trying to have fun with you guys. Oh, oh, oh my God. Uh, get the water. Before the water get me. <laughs> oh my God, that was so much fun. This is what they can make you dance all night. Wow. How many of you know how to dance at my town dance? Come, come, come. Let me see your moves. Me, I'll be watching while you do it. Who did it before? Come on, come, come to the front. Come on. Come to the front. If you, if you did the video, you still remember how to do it. Hey, hey, you did it. Who knew how to do it? I don't go gym for two weeks. I'm not nearing that place. There's a gym trainer here. Sorry, guy, but this is going to work out for two weeks. I work my abs, my joint, my bones. What else? My, ch my, my chest, my teeth, everything will work out. I beg, come on, put this in my ear again. One last try. I don't know why it's not staying. Thank you, Lord. This is how I have fun. Mommy, Daddy, you remember when I used to do parties, right? You guys came to the parties. Please, Daddy or Mommy, can you, Daddy come, now you come pass. Cause you know you used to rock reggae. Did you know how to play reggae beats for us? Eh? Dun, 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 dun. Come on now, Daddy. Daddy's always ready. Daddy, this is your setting, wait, they said that. Eh? All right, give me some reggae beats. Today, now, today. Mm -hmm. Wait that one. Boom, 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 boom. Eh? He will rest. Hey, what? What a go on in heaven. Eh? What a go on. Jesus. What in the happen for heaven? Come on, daddy. Hey. What a go on. Jesus is the king of kings. I wanna, I wanna let
Daddy, don't sit down yet. Daddy, you're always on the page, sorry. <laughs> Daddy, remember how when I used to do parties, you would come to the parties, you were the reggae guy, right? Wasn't it fun? Hmm? <laughs> Daddy, those days now, when you having fun? Yes, those days, it was really fun. And um, anytime you see when there is reggae, song or music, you see some, some of my, our guys who come out and demonstrate, display. You're one. <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun those days, but now we don't even we don't even do that. Personally, I don't even know reggae houses anymore. So that's it. We gave up everything. But then, Daddy, you know, I used to hype everybody. I'll make you dance, make everybody dance. You thought that was where my celebrity was in? Exactly. And those days. When she was doing that, I thought that is where the, the future is going to be. And the star is going to come from there. But God said, no, I have my, my own plan. God has his own plan. And his plan is always good. His plan is always good. Sometimes we ask things that are not good for us, but he delays it because he knows that it's not good for us. And he will give us the best thing at his own best time. Sometimes we murmur, we grumble, but when we wait, we see the end of it and we enjoy it. Sometimes it's not easy to wait. The waiting time is very, very sad, annoying. But if you, if you are able to have the patience to wait, you will enjoy the end. So may God give us the strength and the patience to wait for him, for his time to come. So this is my time to shine and how do you like this this dimension I love it this is great this is what we're all expecting and I know God will increase you more you will go higher and higher this is not just this is not the end we will go higher and higher and higher up so that's all what we are all looking for and facing there, the star is coming. Amen. The star is coming. Thank you, Daddy, for supporting me even when I was a party promoter coming to dance reggae. I just made a song for you. I don't know. I even said Buya, Buya. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? It's like the little club is there. <laughs> They'll say, look, look at your woman or God. <laughs> they go mock me for online. No? <laughs> but you sounded good, right? What's her going in heaven? Mommy, come now. Even you, you supported me. I remember you came to Club Kalahari. You came to some of my parties. How did you feel then coming? Well, it was you doing what you were doing, so I had to support you. Did you, did you enjoy it? I enjoyed myself. <laughs> I don't believe it, because my mom doesn't dance, so she would just be in one corner, be looking. It's my father that would just leave her and go and dance. Yeah, but sometimes you dance while you're standing yes <laughs> it's only visible to you because you know you are dancing you don't have to go on the floor and start jumping like you know yeah that's the kind of dance I like dancing most times I remember when I first came to Houston to join you guys in 2000 20, 2001 I did my birthday and I got a big hole and you guys were like, when you first came, it was empty. And you were standing there, you're like, are you sure people will come? And then boom, the place got filled up. How did you feel that time? Because I was only like one year old there. I was surprised. She was just here one year. Yes, she came 2000. 
and 2001, she had a birthday party and it was filled up. I was surprised. Was that the first time I entered the limo? Yes, that was the first time I entered the limo. No, you entered limo in 20, the last birthday I did, 2015. Oh. Yes, so. It was 2015. I forgot I was, I was trying to move it back. <laughs> the first party I did. You said, Belema, where do you know these people from? <laughs> we have been here since 1982, 84. You just got here. Was that your graduation party? Okay, there are so many, so it's hard for me to remember it. <laughs> yeah. Rose Garden Hall, Bissonnette and Wilcrest. That one was another thing. The way I dressed, one mini, back open. Mommy, how are you feeling all those things? What were you thinking in your head? Well, uh, I thought that's where the greatness was coming from, but I was just trying to support, just trying to be there for you. So, you know, I was just trying to do what a mother has to do for her child. Yes, be there for your children, especially when you know they are doing something good. Parties are not always bad, as long as people are happy. Well, it was the wrong kind of party. Yeah, this is the right one that we should be doing. Yes. So when you see me doing all this dancing, singing, all of that, you, you, you've always knew, like you knew I got it in me. She is well endowed. God is really blessed her. She's good in all things. That she does, I will not say, you know, but whatever she sets her mind to do, she does it really well. She's very, very gifted. In fact, I was the one pushing her. You need to go and sing. You need to sing. Don't just leave this voice here. Go and make some music. So I see everything in her talent, how blessed she is. So, yeah, she's really good. She can do. It's, it's really one man's touch, right? The way she says it. You are, you are gifted. You sing, you dance, you rap. What can you do that you want to do? The preach, oh, the preaching, sometimes when she says things, I say, ah, God is really talking to you. God is really blessing you. The way she breaks it up. I read the Bible, but sometimes I don't understand. The way she understands it, and especially with this so many translations, you know, it's easy to understand. I'm a King James Version person, you know, but she really preaches. She's, God is really helping her. So I'm so grateful to God. Somebody clap for my mommy. Thank you, mommy. They were always supporting me. If I have my big events, they come, comedy shows. This same Houston. Sometimes I'll just see them in the corner. I'll announce them. My parents are here, just like I'm doing now. And they thought I was going to be a celebrity in the social world. God is like, don't worry, I'm eyeing her. She's training now. I used to do many things. I was so popular in this town, eh? Hey, party go full. Ah. Now I'm here doing the work of God. With all the trainings from the world. Mommy, I was always making people happy. I knew all their names. I know even if the hall is full. Mr. John! Hi, hey, Felicia! I remember conversations. How's your wife now? She didn't come. Hey. People like people that remember them, know their name, that, are, that, that you know, that appreciate them for coming. So that's just how I was. And I'm still like that. Even better now with anointing, right? I could just wave. God was eyeing me. This one is too good. Mommy, you know when I know they party, when I'm not in my party, It's dull. Nobody really wants to dance. They, they will just sit there and wait for her. And when she comes in, hey, mm -mm -mm. the way they come in, she and her gang with the big afro, they're coming that way all my, sh she's in front. And if there is no announcement, she's going back out for them to start all over again. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and all that I was very broke. Very, very broke. Payless. 
was her shopping place. She will come with four pairs of shoes. Uh, total what, $20, $30? But now we go with what? Wait, I used to buy one, get three free, get two free. When I buy, my mother will be bending it to see the ring. I said, don't break my shoe. <laughs> he said, that's how you know original shoe. I said, leave me like that. Those days, when my mother goes buy a purse, 150, right? Tell us one person. There was a time I bought a purse for 145 plus 99 plus tax. When I came on, she said, what have they done to my mother? What is this? It's a very good purse. Very solid designer purse. So, but now she buys a $3,000, $4,000 purse, which I don't want to buy. It's too expensive for me. I showed her, I said, Mommy, I got this in London. It was almost 3000 She said, well, Emma, I remember when I buy 149 pots? You said it was too expensive. Now, yeah. I said, well, it's quality. I said, you know, levels don't change. May God upgrade your life. In Jesus' name. Before my mother would bring one person, I said, well, Emma, come and see this, 152 I said, for what? For pillars now, $15 now. You see what I'm saying? Little did I know, I was in London, I bought five purses, 15,000 or something, easy. Cause you know, I've been giving away my purses and I haven't bought, I buy once and I will use for years. I don't shop like that. So I was just telling her, she was like, hmm, this life, you were the one. Oh my God, I don't bless me. We're so grateful. When I was talking about my house, how I always thank God. You said something about housing. I'm always thankful, you know, thankful that she has her own home, paid off. She doesn't know the meaning of mortgage, sitting down, signing papers, then getting uh, monthly payments, refinancing, and then uh, tax, of course, she pays tax. Uh, Excro and all those things. She doesn't have time for all those things, you know. So she paid it off. That's grace. And and also, it's not just just grace. She knows how to manage her finances. She doesn't spend, spend, spend like people do. Some people, at least, once they come in contact with money. They are doing things that are not important. But that's not who she is. And she doesn't do when she's not led. Yes, she has to be led to do whatever she's doing. So we need to learn from her seriously. If we're not good in managing, yes, she's very good. So that's how she gets it. I read a, uh, a comment that somebody made. So, oh, where do you get your money to be doing all these things? And she tells you everything that she does. The money that comes into the ministry, the tithes and offering, if everybody is doing it the way she's doing it, nobody will be broke. No church member will be really drained. So yeah, she tells you everything. She tells you everything. There's nothing she keeps. Now, the way, okay, the free gifts and everything. Now, when I say she tells you everything, we are not spared too, right? Uh-huh. She tells you things about us, so that is why I am very careful. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you say, oh, like recently I told, uh, Lexi sent me a message. Uh, Grandma, is the sound okay? Is this all right? Mm. I said, Alexis, it's good. But after a while, I replied, I said, thank you for including me, involving me in this. Because if anything happens, eh, I know it sound is good, but if contrary is the case, you have a case with me. <laughs> because you know, Apostle will say, oh, mommy, you're washing, and then no, no sound, nobody told me. Last time she said, I said, please, I was 13 minutes into it. You were 13 minutes into it before I, I logged in. No? So I tried to free myself. So we are not spared, too. Because we know why she's doing what she's doing. It's God's work, not family work, 
not our own personal work. So we respect that, you know. So, yeah, that's our, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, mommy. Oh, somebody clap for my mommy. I was in London and Alexis was checking the sound. She said, when I message your, your mom, she said, Alexis, I don't want any trouble, look. Please. I don't know. I think she was saying that. No, go and use me and say, I said the sound was good. If the woman go come and say the sound wasn't good, don't, don't call my name. Because <laughs> I like to give God the best. Perfection. You know, and my parents watch me. My mom was there from day one. She sees me go live. I'm fasting. She's cooking. The temptations. She helped me a lot. Most times when I do the eight hours videos, she already made food put on the dining, waiting for me to come eat. I don't go out. I'm always home. In that small closet. Sometimes I want to ch chat with her. God will say, go preach. If I'm still chatting, fire will come all over me. I'll say, mommy, I have to go and preach. I'm going. <laughs> it's okay, okay, go. Yeah. And then one day I was with her in her room. And then I entered her toilet. And I heard God clearly say, enjoy this moment. Because very soon, she will not have access like this with you. Or something like you will not be around her like this. So I came and I said, Mommy, I just heard this in your bathroom. God said that very soon I won't be around. She was now sad. So when I started traveling out of country, I thought that was it. I did not know that he would move me totally far. So I always remind her of that day. And this was in 2017. But then in 2022, it happened. But she was in Columbus a few days ago. She takes care of my son when I travel. Right? And my son likes it because, come, Michael, come say something about grandma. Let the world hear it. When grandma comes to visit, tell us why you love when grandma comes to visit. Tell the truth, pour your heart. She's right here. Um, all right, in all, in all honesty, all honesty is the food. But <laughs> I like having you, I like having you there too because it's better than having like nothing. No, yeah, just being alone. And like, I grew up in y'all's house. So I'm just used to seeing you guys. When you saw Grandpa yesterday, you ran to go hug him. Yeah, I mean, I'm not very emotional, and I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not a very emotional person. But when I saw him, I just like, because I haven't seen him in over a year, or about a year. I think he came for my birthday in October. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Besides that, I haven't seen him for about a year. Wow. Hey, Grandpa, oh Grandpa, <laughs> I don't see him like that. How did you feel moving and leaving them here? Tell us now. Um, I felt sad the, the day that we left and grandma was hugging us, like I, I like actually cried and she cried too. And as we were leaving, I was just looking at her at, at the driveway and I just, I felt bad because what if we don't come back? And then how did you cope without them there? Cause you're used to having them. Um, I just, learn to do everything or most things by myself like laundry even taking care taking care of myself or like even cooking i just adapted to that when we're living with them grandma was doing your laundry she was always doing all the cooking most of the cooking and then now she even say you do so well in the house like the man of the house um, yeah basically I'm the only guy there, but yeah. And then you left all your friends here and you go to a white school. I say white school, like mostly white folks there, right? Because the area we stay is like, so he wasn't used to that. Like the school here is mixed. You know, Houston is so diverse. It's like a lot of different people. And how are you coping with that? Um. I don't, I'm, I mean, I can be friends with anybody regardless of your race or like your whatever, whatever. I can be friends with everybody. It was just different for me. And also like trying to assimilate and trying to talk to more people because sometimes I'm a little socially awkward, believe it or not, but I'm, I'm still trying, yeah. Somebody clap for my son. It's not easy because he made friends here. He started, I think, is it middle or kindergarten? Where did he start first one? Kindergarten? All the way to what? Is it eighth grade? 
and suddenly it's hearing, we got to go. You got one day to tell your classmates. How did you cope with that one? You just had to go and get phone numbers from your friends? Uh, yeah, I tried to talk to as many of them as I could and try to make it not seem awkward. I'm like, hey, because it was just so abrupt. I don't even know like when or where we were moving to until that day. So I just came up to them and was like, hey, I'm moving like up north to Ohio. Um, can I just get your number so I can like talk to y'all. So, yeah. You got 20 something numbers, right? Yeah, over 20. Like I said, I know a lot of I know a lot of people. I mean, I don't really talk to them like that, but that's not not anymore. But yeah. You know, it's one thing for you to obey God, and it's another thing for your kids to to go with it. Believe it or not, it affects them. Yeah, everything has changed. Ohio is Columbus is smaller. Houston is big. Right, the houses, like we have a new house, but the area we first lived in was downtown, right? Yeah, uh, when we first came, we stayed in Dublin for a bit, and then we came to downtown, and then where we are now. Sometimes you feel like coming to Houston, right? Moving back here. I mean, I wouldn't as go as far to say moving, but I just feel like going down there visiting just for a bit like when you said uh you thought about coming there in december i was actually really excited but then you were like oh god's not leaving me there i'm like all right that's cool but now you're happy to be here now yeah very happy and i'm trying to cherish it because i don't know when i'll be back mm -hmm. somebody clap for jesus <laughs> he got you It is well. It is well. Okay. I love you. Thank you for coming with me. If you if you had left or if you had stayed behind, you wouldn't even like it knowing that I'm there by myself. Yeah, I would have had an empty feeling. I would have been worried because you didn't even know you didn't even get in a, in a hotel when you first when we, when we first left. So I was like, where is she gonna stay? Or, or I would have been like, where's she gonna stay? What's she, what's she gonna do? Thank you so much. Somebody clap for Michael. Sometimes it's hard, because sometimes, you know, when he comes from school, he misses his friends here. He still does still today. But he still texts them. I think he texts some of them, telling them he was in town. I said, don't worry, you will grow old, you will get other friends. And he said, well, high school is different, you know, like, some of these people have been knowing themselves. They went to the middle school together and all that. And then where we live is different from here. It's like a quiet, you know, like I wanted God to give us a safe place. Because when you move to a place, you got to know the areas you're living in. You don't want to go where they rob people, you know, like do all that. It's going to make the experience bad. So we got a new area, a good area. Very nice. Mommy, don't you like that area when you come? Very peaceful, very nice, feels safe, you know, but it's not compared to where we are. We were here in Houston. But it's okay, he will be fine. He will be fine. Sometimes I feel for him. One time I wanted to send him here. And he was kind of happy, you were happy. I said, okay, you're gonna go this weekend, it's okay. Um, I asked him, I said, so when do you wanna go? He said, um, maybe this weekend. I said, wait, so you really want to leave me? He said, but I thought you were serious. I said, no, I'm not serious. I'm just playing. <laughs> it's not easy because we didn't really know anybody there. My members, some of them moved, but it's still not the same. I came here since 2000. This is where my parents have been living since. Daddy, you came 82, right? But you were not living in Houston when you came. Where? Wisconsin. And then you moved here when, what year? It, 1983. And mommy came to join you in 1984. So you guys have been in Houston, Texas from 1983 and 84 till now. How many years is that? 40 something? 40 years. And then when I moved here, I came to join them in 2000. It's always been Houston. I went to University of Houston downtown. 
I went, I did everything here, and then God just whew, ah, took me far. If it was like Dallas, Texas, she could drive. They could take a road trip, but that one is 18 hours. But my mom is a frequent flyer now, because whenever I travel out of country, she comes. And Michael loves it, because whenever she's leaving, the, full, the fridge is full with food. And that's why I say, to be honest, is the food. It's not like I don't really cook, but I cook mostly okra soup and all this fufu them. But she makes them things, burritos, all those American things. I'm so happy. Somebody clap for her for still coming to help me when I travel. But you know, all these things, no one has asked me how I felt or how I feel. One day my son asked me, he said, Mom, do you get lonely or bored? Doing this work of God. I said, son, I've been lonely and bored from the first day God called me to work for him. But it's good. Because I used to be popular. My mom knows. Daddy, you know, I had a lot of numbers. Over 3,000 on my phone. I knew close to 100 DJs. I knew almost all the party promoters in Houston and other states that are Africans. I knew all the best restaurants, best clubs. I had numbers to anything. If you want to do an event, just text me princess do you know a good DJ do you know a good hall I'm the woman for everything a day I'll get at least 200 text messages back and forth I used to bring a lot of ladies to the house mommy right sometimes Christmas or holiday I'll pack all of them come you will cook I had two best friends one was living close to us right Michael you've even been to their house to play with them right and the other one moved even closer and when God called me, all of them, I wasn't speaking to them. Sometimes when I take my kid to school, I see who the one that moved closer, I'm taking, running. I'll greet her, hey girl, hey. We were so close that she used to spend the night in my house when I was married. But she moved closer, but God called me. They will all go out. Daddy will go to school. Mommy, daddy teaches. Mommy teaches too. Michael goes to school. I'm the only one in that big house. But I hear God so clearly. The house is so quiet. And I'll be preaching online, speaking in tongues. I was speaking in tongues 18 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours. No work, nothing, just the work of God. It was lonely. It was boring. But it helped me to hear him better and know how to speak to him, know his voice. You can't just take a lady from, from the crowd and put her like in a lonely place and she will obey you like that. It took God's help to get me like this. It's like a, it's like a big switch. It's like taking her from the crowd and, and I never went back. I stayed with him. I was never missing anything. I had no friends to talk to. It was my mom and the false prophet. And he was always busy with his two phones. And that's why when my ex-cousin came, mommy, you know, that was my friend. It was very lonely. I uninstalled game. Do you know when I was coming in the plane? The second flight we entered, I played game for the whole two hours. I said, Father, forgive me, but I won't play game. Ah, I saw one game, ping pong, I'll be something. I must win this thing. Before you know, they say we're about to land in Houston. I said, Jesus, please don't be angry, but man, I haven't played game in a long time. Right? I used to have game on my phone. Mommy, I uninstalled it. I used to watch some shows, popular shows I could not. I deleted them from the DVR. Mommy, you're my witness. You're there. I go, they put TV and all this Christian stuff. Right? When they're watching something else, I don't, I don't really come downstairs. I stay up. I don't like white. I started wearing white. I told you, change my sheets, please. My comforter, my, my cotton. Everything was white. Even the shower cotton. She was just doing everything white for me. If I sleep in color, my body starts to itch me. She saw my transformation. Long dresses. It has to be long. Because before it was short. My legs, very beautiful. Sometimes we use oil and rub it. Thing with a shine. It's calling attention. Now I wear this and I still wear tights. Everything is covered. Nothing to show any cleavage. Before, if I buy a Victoria's Secret, you must see it. I will wear and I will open some buttons down. But now, 
if I see small cleavage, I get upset. You see the transformation? And it's been like this for years. So when we say we have repented, even from the way we live, the, the things, everything has to change. Don't just say you, have, you are saved, but you're still dressing naked. You're still talking nonsense. You're still hanging with all these unbelievers. They're still doing all these things. Me, I was totally changed. Totally. Even when they were persecuting me, mom, sometimes I take off seven days. What do I do? I stay in my closet. Mommy, you're my witness. Seven days I will be there praying, crying, reading, telling God to come fight for me. One day I saw my, I typed my name on Google in their kitchen. And what I saw on Google about me was horrible. They even did a petition against me. My son came and said, Mom, don't worry about that. We know you're not like that. My parents are so strong. My papa said, don't mind these people. My mama said, please forget them. I said, Father, if you don't do something, nobody will work for you again. And said, don't worry, I'll fight for you. I said, I don't have anything good on my name online. This is all they're saying about me. Even when I was doing parties, nobody called me these names. I did not know I had to really suffer like Jesus did. I thought once I come to Christ, everybody will embrace me. Oh, finally you're in Christ. We are all one. But it was the opposite. But I'm glad I went through it. Because God has elevated me. God has rewarded me. He said, anyone who endures to the end shall be saved. I endured and I... Do you know, ministry, I have put in so many hours and time. I've done things where my voice will crack. The next day I won't have a voice. I've shouted, come out of her. Come out in the name of... But you see this one that I just wave? I'm going to do it now. It won't take 15 minutes. I'll be done. This is the best gift that God has given me. In Kenya, I waved my hand across the face of over 4,000 people. My hand did not hurt me. It took two hours and some change. Did you watch it? See, today people are still sending me testimonies. Somebody even sent me one today or yesterday. That she was able to give her bed to her child and something, something that I, I, I was going to screenshot it and post it best gift. It makes it so easy. I, Mita, I talked to Mita. Mita, come, my sweetie. I talked to her a few days ago. Well, not two days ago, me and you were talking. Yes, two days ago. Because she was ago, telling me man. she was coming. And then I prayed for her. Right? Yes, mommy. This woman, you know, I, she always make me laugh. Mita, what did you say when I made it break? She said, there is power and great. <laughs> I said, there is power and there is powder. <laughs> you see, while I was talking to you, I was feeling so much fire or something. Fire all over my belly. It's like the minute she called me, and it, and honestly, I miss you too. So that and um, the anointing as well, all of them just combined, and it was just like a burning around my belly. And I believe that's where I actually needed the uh, deliverance most. Because ever since then, I've just been so hungry. Wow, you yeah, yeah, told me that. Yeah, and even so till, yeah, even till now, I ju I'm just hungry. I, I don't understand why. But I believe it's deliverance. Something had to leave. Something actually left. I say you have come again. I was laughing. <laughs> this is, this is, anno this is, anno like the way she was talking, you know, she's very funny. She knows how to do these things. It was two days ago. She said, wow. If you talk to me and you don't feel it, then something's wrong. Because I'm always hidden. I'm always, God keeps me. Even when I was in Houston, before I moved, you live here now. You didn't used to see me like that. One no. day you even came to my studio and we had opened the door not knowing why, not knowing you were coming. And I was talking to you, you were crying that whole time. I think you were about to make a decision or so. Yes, I was about to make a decision to leave the choir. And God just yes, used my mouth. God spoke through you. And you were confirmed just crying. Yes. Wow. God has used me to save you a lot. So many times. Even two days ago, you know, when you were speaking and, you know, giving me that message about um, the Pentecost and how the disciples, um, like, on, when Jesus had, you know, left them, they went out to minister and they were about... 
Peter preached and there were about 4,000 or 5,000 believers who had repented, right? All 3, at 000, the same yes. time, yes. Mm -hmm. But then on the day of Pentecost, it was not up to um, a 1,000 in there. Oh, oh, it was just 150 or so. 120. 120, yes. So um, you were preaching and you, you told me, it's not easy to wait. And only those who endure to the end get the reward. And I said everyone in that room received. Yes. Everyone. Yes. Received. Mm -hmm. And that day was like a regular day, like nothing was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we never know when it's going to be. And so, sometimes... I didn't even know why I was preaching that to you. It was for me. I, I needed that booster. <laughs> I, I was like, I, I said, sweetie, yes. I don't know why I'm saying this. I don't know why I'm preaching this. Mm -hmm. But my mouth is just saying this. She said, ah, I know what it is. Yeah, because she had messaged me. She said, ah, I have not disconnected. <laughs> I'm still here. I've just been busy. I laugh. I said, you know, I was laughing. I said, <laughs> he said, I'm coming to the program. I said, sweetie, that was so funny. And then I called her. Not knowing she was, she was attacked in some place. She went to work, right? You see, mm -hmm. you went to work and suddenly moving object just came over you and you had to leave yes. that work. Yeah, I got busy at that job and never had time to pray anymore like I would love to you know and with the kids and everything else you have you know, four? four kids yeah. yes it's not easy it's not easy it's a it's a I wouldn't call it a burden but it's a load <laughs> yes and a, a, you know a husband too so, and taking care of your husband is, is actually a, a big deal, too. <laughs> it's a ministry. <laughs> it's a ministry on his own, yes. So I'm um, trying to manage that and work, and this job was far away from me. So travel time and all of that commute time, you know, it just kind of add into my personal time with God. Barely could have time to pray. So because of that, my, I, I would call it my spiritual barriers, like defense, got broken. And... You know, they Attacked started, they, like. they had a field day. <laughs> yes. So, but then um, I, it came to a point where I had to make a tough decision. To leave. To leave. Job. Yes. I didn't know because, you know, I'm always busy. She's busy too, but we got to talk. And then she started saying this, fire. I was just laughing. But then I was like, but I've always been on fire. I, I still on fire. I see challenges people go through, and it's easy for us to go through that. But me, I can't go through that because I'm always in his presence. I even have a room for God in my house. I don't have friends to call and talk to. I don't go anywhere, so I must read my Bible. <laughs> Do you understand? God kept me like that so that all of you can be blessed. So when my son asked me that question, do you get bored or lonely? I'm like, sweetie, I've been bored and lonely from the first day. I started working for God, but it's good because it's helping me get closer and closer to him. Thank you, my darling. Somebody Thank you, Mom. Her. I, oh, I see I want water. Look what you're not giving me. Dromo. Jesus. Thank you, my darling. So if I stay like that, it's good for all of you. Sometimes even husbands, I'm like, mm. But are you going to have to help me? Or the man that will marry me has to love you more than I love you. And I don't know if there's anyone like that. Because they won't understand. It's, 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 it's just going to be. I know God has somebody. Because it's not easy to do this by yourself. You need support. Right? You need a husband. But they have to be in the line with me. The same line with me. And my ministry is supernatural. I dream dreams. I see things. I have seen Jesus many times. He has appeared in form of me. We've looked face to face. He has appeared in the form, clear form. You see like a, you see something clear, but the shape of a human being. He sat on my laps before as a blind guy and got up and changed to a clear figure. And then I now know why sometimes I will sit down, preach, and I won't get tired. When I want to get up, I can't. It's like God is sitting on me. Even in the programs, you guys sometimes don't get up to pee, right? You stay for 12 hours. <laughs> How many of you ever believed you could stay in a 12-hour program? You used to go to church for two hours, one hour. Three days in a row, you stay for even five days of glory. 12 hours, and you were not even tired. And that was a COVID season. We all got sick. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, I was sick too. This ministry has given you hours. Even when I come online, if I say, okay, I'm just going to be here for a few minutes, they're like, ah, Apostle, where are you rushing to? Because you guys work and you use my videos while you're working. Like, how many of you listen to it at work? I know some of you work at night or something. It's like, this thing keeps you awake, especially night shift, right? And some people say they put their earpiece and use their hair to cover it. <laughs> this, this husband, see, he's pointing to his wife. <laughs> <laughs> so the ministry has really been a blessing because sometimes you're cooking the TV is on, you're hearing and if I say put your hand on your head you leave what you're doing, yeah, everybody put your hand on your head and pray God put me online to locate many of you that some of you were not able to go to church because of your work schedule some of you needed something to bring you closer to God even while you are still doing your other things and boom that lady popped up online laughing. How many of you like the jokes that I make? You laugh. Does your wife laugh out loud sometimes in the house? Is it? <laughs> come now, sir. Come, let's hear from you. Give me a mic. Let's hear from a husband how he copes with his wife. Come, 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 come. Come, give me that mic, sweetie. Let's give him the mic. So this is her husband. She brought him to homecoming and I, somebody clap for a husband like him. Thank you, That thank supports you. his wife. He loves Prophet T.B. Joshua. You even gave me a book from him, right? Yes, I did. So you like my ministry because it kind of reminds you of... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tell us how your wife enjoys the videos at home. Come on, wife. Come stand near your husband. Let them see you. Because we are not there, but tell us how she... Because when I say who is listening, you point to her. Yes. So at our Put it home... Put close to mom. <laughs> at our home, um, there's an there's a conflict of interest because she listens to Queen Belemzi and I'm into TV Joshua. So it's a conflict. The TV is there in the, in the living room. She's at the, she has a channel. She's going to Queen Belemzi and I'm going to TV Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> so at times, I have to be the one who is in the living room watching TV Joshua. She's in the bedroom watching Queen Belemzi. So, but I've seen growth in my wife. Since Somebody she clap for she, Jesus. Yes. Come on now. Yes, I've seen growth. And before I go any further, <laughs> I just want to say something funny. We are both Jamaicans. <laughs> so when you were playing the reggae music and your dad was dancing, it took me back to a time when we were in the clubs and stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You guys used to dance like that? Oh, yes. Okay, oh, wait, yeah. wait. We were... I want to give you a special song. No. Where that reggae bit? Come on now. Come on. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I got to remind you of something. Come on. Eh? Come on. Come to the middle now. Come on now. How you used to do it in the club? Boop, 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 boop. Hey! We got the real Jamaican in the house. Come on. You used to dance with him now. You used to dance with your husband now. Come on now. Eh? You come stand here. Come on now. Come on. Aha. Uh -huh. Come on now. Is that what you were doing before? Maka, Maka. Come on now. You are in Christ now. So give that step for Jesus. Come on now. What a good one. Jesus is in this place. Hayaba, Hayaba, yeah. What a what a one, what a one. Holy Ghost encounter in Houston, Texas. Hiyaka, 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 ma hiyana, hiyana, kana ma na ma na ma na ma. Heya, hallelujah. Come on, ah, this man is dancing. How you do? Boom, 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 boom. Come on, ah, come on, come on. Hey, life has changed. You are in Christ now. Somebody clap for Jesus. I can tell you were a dancer. No, no, can't you tell? The moment he just did that thing. See, in Christ, we can yes. have fun. Come yes. on, sweetie. So when my father was dancing, you were like, try. Yes. Honey, you remember how we used to do I, it? I almost totally forget how to dance because it's, <laughs> it's been a long time, years since I haven't been there. So I don't follow that system anymore. Wow. I don't. I mean, I listen to some music, some reggae music, but not those, you know, 
slacky, slack type of music and profanity music, you know? Yes. It's more gospel reggae now that we listen to. And, and that's why your wife loves this place. We get all of yes. that. Yes. We get fun. Yes. We get, we cry. We worship. We laugh. Yes. Come on, let's yes. hear her now. Speak loud and speak. Uh-huh. Yes, we laugh, we cry, we have a lot of fun in this ministry. The Holy Spirit, it moves so, he moves and the word so of God. powerful in this ministry. May you understand the messages? Yes. Wow. Yes, pretty easy. You explain it very well. Easy to understand. I mean, it's awesome. I work from home, so oh, it's you so work easy from home. for me. Yes, so I just play you all day. He wow. comes home and I'm listening. And he's watching his own? And you're watching yes, your own? sometimes we watch together. Like right. if you're live, sometimes we'll watch together. And but then he likes to come to the program with you. That's also awesome. Yeah, he doesn't mind at all. Actually, I was just off randomly this weekend. Um, I took it off like maybe a month ago. You didn't even have, know something would happen. I didn't even know something was going to happen. Well, you guys flew from out of town. From... We live close to Orlando. Florida. Okay. I'm supposed to be coming there soon. <laughs> Remember I had that dream? Yes. Wow. And you came for homecoming. Why do you always like Houston? That's the two that you've come with him, right? Yes. I came to the tent revival but in Columbus. But somehow he always comes to Houston. To Houston. You? It just worked out that way, I guess. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. It was his birthday Oh, weekend. this is your birthday weekend? No, when we came to... Last time, yes, last yes, Last time, yes. it was his birthday, so... And he said he's seen some change. It's like he's seen you change. Yes. Like what does he mean praying, by that? Like praying more, worshiping more, spending more time in my prior closet. He does the same thing in his closet, too. So it's like our spiritual life has really grown, matured. So there's peace in the house. Yes. I mean, I feel so good in this ministry. I feel privileged. I feel so blessed. I've learned so much. But there's always one thing I wanted to ask you. Like, how do you put the comments on the screen? Like, I, <laughs> usually when we type stuff, and it's always on there, I'm like, how does she you do that? You see your so, name on there, yeah, on the so screen. Like, like, yes. How do you do that, like, so fast? Like, I'm just good at that. Yeah. I said I always wanted to ask God you God is that. helping me. Yes. But I'm so happy that he's happy. That he's, and he's, seen, he's really looked at his wife and he's seen changes. Yes. He never he, stopped you. And he never stopped me, never bothered me, never complained or anything like that. Not, no. Somebody clap for this man. Come yes. on now, come on now. We love yep. husbands like this because we have so many women that their husbands don't understand us. But if they really look deep, there's a change in their wife. Mm-hmm. Come on now, he has something to say. So, um, as you said, we are both have our difference in how we worship, but it's the same God. She's in, she worship queen. I don't worship you, but she listens to your program and your podcast. And I listen to um, TV Joshua's ministries. And then I go over to his other apostles also. But the thing about it is that there had to be something that convicted our hearts to see a source that is higher than us that we cannot explain. And with your teachings, how she has um, listened to your programs and watched your videos, her heart has been convicted. And with that, it has gro- it, I've seen growth in her. She goes in her closet, she locks the door, she prays for, for hours. I'm here, I'm listening, and she's crying in there and stuff like that and it's the same with me because my heart has been convicted um i've I've been to nigeria to the synagogue church of all nations but before i went to see the prophet i remember i was praying i was i get in touch by watching his videos on youtube and i saw all these deliverance and stuff and i'm like huh this man must be fake and i said lord i remember i praying that night And I said, Lord, if this man is fake or if he's real, um, show me a sign. And I remember after watching his videos, I went to bed that night. And for some reason, I get up at like 
one or two in the morning and I went over to her side of the bed and said, come on, we, we have to pray, we have to pray, we have to pray. And right there, we are, I'm just praying and I mean, the only thing I can say is, Lord Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's all, that's what's coming out of my mouth, Jesus, Jesus. So from that time, I said, no, I have to see this man who he is. And it took me to Nigeria, a couple of times. But I'm saying our heart has been convicted by someone who Jesus Christ has sent to us. Because probably if we had tried to seek Jesus on our own, we probably wouldn't have gotten the explanation as to who he is and his teachings. So uh, I'm just glad that... And, and you know why I'm, I, I'm allowing you to talk about this? Because yes, sir. Prophet TV Joshua's church is where I give my tithes and offerings. He's the one that God told me to, even now that he's late, I'm still connected to giving there. Because truly speaking, that's probably the only man of God that I connected with. I saw similarities. Yes. That's, uh, I've seen him in my dream. He's appeared to me. I've never met him face to face, even before he died. But I feel like I've met him because I've hugged him. I see how humble he is. I see the things that he does. I see it's not easy to be walking every Sunday, row by row. Most of these men of God just stay on the pulpit. They never come down. Yeah. Even the wife is functioning the same way now. Yeah. Do you know you, you finish preaching and then you go row by row, touching people? This thing is not easy. Every Sunday, even when she goes out of country, they have a section like that. See, people can easily criticize servants of God, but I know the work. Even this small room. So even go row by row, maybe even be tiring. Do you know how big their church is? Yeah. The way they also give help the less privileged. So they will pray for people the same way we do here. Give money. As they are led, even rice, bag of rice, give food, right? And then you see people come back after they are delivered 20 years later. Years later to still come and give a testimony from 20 years ago. These are real people. We used to watch it in our house, right? My mom and dad. And I always told you guys, I said, this man of God, they walk. This man, they walk. No case that comes that they turn away. Sometimes they will leave the church, go outside. Some people will be in the car. Maybe their case is so bad they can't come. They will go, touch, pray. Yes. This is humility. This is what Jesus did. It's not just talk, talk, talk. He doesn't even brag about anything. You won't even know he has anything. It's just mostly about the work. Nigeria, they lost a great man of God. Yes. yes. In fact, recently they were doing some videos, trending some nonsense about him. Those same people will run to that his church for his wife to deliver them. Watch. Yes. I'm telling you, Absolutely. whenever I see, the man of God went through a lot. He suffered a lot. Let me shock you guys. That song I have, I am great to be the world of God. Oh. That day, before going to sleep, I saw a video of him dancing because he rarely dances. There was this short clip of him dancing. I don't know if anyone has seen it. Like... So I was watching and laughing and then I went to sleep. And then I saw that I was in a congregation like this. And then my keyboard is then was playing, but he was dancing the way the prophet TV Joshua was dancing in the video I saw. And then I was singing, I am great to be the whole of God. Oh. He was playing the keyboard, but his leg was going and my former keyboard he doesn't dance. So when I walk up close to him, he whispered in my ear, he said, I miss you. I said, I know. And then I kept singing, What more can I think about? What more can I think about but loving God? Funny enough, the beat that he was dancing to has a little, the kind of beat to the I Am Great song. At first, I didn't get it that it was him that God appeared as. Right? It was strange, but he's the one Years ago, mommy, you remember that dream in 2019 or 
that he came to me. He said, what do you want God to do for you? I said, I want to be the most powerful woman of God in the world. And I woke up saying that. And he's the one that was playing the keyboard. For I am great to be. It's like the wish or the prayer request. Greatness. You have received it. Don't you get it? So that man, that's why I'm letting you talk. If it was another pastor, I'm not even going to let you talk. I'll take my mic. No, 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 no. I'm serious because I've been through a lot of false prophets. But I love him so much. Yes. And I've never met him. I admire his work. He has contents. Yes. He has helped people. People travel from all over the world to come and get delivered for free. Yes. Do you understand? And he doesn't waste time. Have you got, mommy, we used to watch him. He doesn't shout or talk too much. The power of God was there. And now his wife functions like him. I always pray for her. Whenever I see her, I'm like, Father, bless her. Strengthen her, please. With all these things they're saying, how is she coping with it? Her husband is not even here. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So I'm glad that you are on a, in a good ministry. You understand? Because that's where I still pay tithes and offering till today. I, I'm not even a partner. They always send partner thing. I don't sign up for it. I just give because God told me yes. to give there. Even my, if I get a dream now and I'm sowing a seed, it's Emmanuel TV that I give it to. Yes. So I'm glad to see a husband and wife. Husband is there. Wife is here. But in a way, you guys are together in it. Somebody clap for this couple. God brought you here for a reason. Thank you. Thank you. you are blessed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow. If it was another pastor, now lie, you know, go talk anything. Yeah? No, no, I'm serious. Come on, take the mic from me. I'm serious. I would not let him speak. But that one, I can tell you. And I don't care what anybody says. Oh, she loves Prophet T.B. Joshua. That's fine. You can go. Go open your own church and see how it goes. For God to anoint somebody like that, now his wife functions like that with her evangelism. That there are many people doing ministry without power. Why is God giving them power like that? They're using it well. Every Sunday. We have a lot of talkatives, but they're not doing anything. But you see me, if I tell you I'm coming here before you know I'm there, how many of you didn't know even I was already back from London? Because some of you were messaging me, Apostle, are you okay? Because the last video you saw of me was in London worshiping, right? And then I didn't come live till today. People were messaging me, Apostle, are you okay? Because I'm always coming live. Don't you wonder how I do it? Every day, eight hours, 12 hours. That's how long the man of God, I don't even know why God is honoring him today. His church, they start from 8 till, they used to go till midnight before. Daddy, I think you've been there before. You had to go there around 3 a.m. or 2 just to line up to be able to get in. The line to enter the church. People even sleep there outside waiting. Don't listen to what you hear online or see online. The same people talking, they are secretly going there, going for prayers. There's power there. Power to do the things of God. There are many churches without power. They just have cross. I don't know if it's cemetery cross or cross room. But there's nothing happening there. This is school of power. Something is here. God told me, don't look for anybody. They'll come looking for you. Because when, when he puts power in people, people come look for me. I don't need to look for you. Did you see Prophet T.B. Joshua's church is still getting full tea today? Have you seen the church empty? With everything. In fact, they even have their own app now. More people are coming there now than before. The gates of hell will never prevail against that church. Do you think it's easy for a woman to carry on something her husband was doing and be working as hard as he was? Some people will give up on God because it's too much. Strong woman. Everybody just bow your head and pray for the wife for one minute. For strength. To keep doing ministry. Because the world wants to destroy everything about that ministry. 
We need people to pray for those ministries that will believe God is there. They have evidence, proof. They preach about Jesus Christ. I've never heard them call another name there. Many people have been free from spiritual husband, spiritual wife. The same thing you guys always message me about for deliverance. They do it there easily. So Father, strengthen your daughter. Thank you for fighting for them. Keep helping them, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for connecting me to that ministry. I've never been there. But I'll never speak against them because I know what you've shown me. Thank you, Jesus. Bless her and all her members and workers in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're here, you're a servant of God. Focus on your own ministry. When you see where grace is, don't fight it because that could also hinder your own. When you see something you like, celebrate it. Appreciate it. Then maybe you can tap and God will bless you. But if you start destroying something that you don't even have, that you're even praying for, and you can see it, you're never going to get it. I'm just saying. You're never going to get it. You can talk, 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 do acrobatics. If you don't got power from heaven, eventually you will close your door. God helps me. Do you know God appears in dreams and tells people I need you to be in the program? God is the one that leads you to buy a flight ticket to come. No, I'm serious. I'm not doing this ministry alone. My mom, when she told me she prayed for me to come, that she can't even believe her prayer is just working right before her. I didn't know. I know I hear God. God helps me. God, even this chair, this is not the color I wanted. God picked it. Even this dress. Even this mic cover. Everything is picked by God. Even this man that's playing the keyboard. This man. I've never met him before physically, but I've heard of him. When I left Houston, my landlord in the office, because I still, I paid for one year, so I still had months left. He said, he messaged me and he said that you were my best tenant. I wish you never traveled. You never moved. I said, oh, don't worry. I'm going to pray for somebody to take over the place. Because I put so much money into that place. It's beautiful. I prayed that night. The next day, this man messaged me. That he wants the place. So I transferred stuff to him. And left some things there. He paid some money and I left some things for him. And he has turned it into a studio. It's very nice. It's working for him. I didn't know God connected us like that so that he could also help me. You guys saw the big old screen. And sometimes in Houston, it was him. And I say Houston, Columbus, Virginia, it was him. Even this man over here. I've never met him before. You know, I met him in programs. It's his wife that I knew. But homecoming time, God put his name in my heart. And I got him. He came and played and... God blessed him with 10,000. I prayed for him. And since then, he's been coming to help me in Columbus. Today, he said, let me tell you. He told me he had to be somewhere 6, 7. I said, oh, my thing ends at 8. He said, Apostle, you're a priority. I will do it. I will shift anything for you. God brought them to me. Like, I don't really pick people on my own. They are connected to me divinely. Even talk back, God hired him. You guys know the story of how he got fired. I don't really go and find people. This is how you know when God is working with somebody. He picks people that he wants. You may not know the reason for the connection, but as time goes on, you begin to understand. But if you're doing things by yourself without the help of God, there will be a struggle. But I don't struggle here. There's so much grace. Sometimes programs may only be five, ten people. I still have fun. Did you see me go to London? Didn't we get a big old church? Did you enjoy it? Oh, we had a great time. I'm not about numbers. I'm about obedience to God. And sometimes God will test you. Like when Jesus had to cross over to the other side of the river to pray for one man that had legions of demons when there were a crowd of people waiting on the other side. Some people would have stayed on that other side without crossing over. And the people didn't even want him there. They told him to leave their town. After you pray for a person to deliver them, he was fully clothed, saying, who gave him clothes to wear? Jesus probably gave him clothes and money and food and everything. The people were not happy. They chased him out of there. What if that was a test? 
He obeyed and went. So when I read about Jesus, I say, Lord, I want to be like you. I'm going anywhere you send me. You know, when I was in the plane, I was singing that, anywhere you send me, I will go. And then when I was now singing that song while I was playing that game, I said, wait, Father, um, even though I'm singing a song, Afghanistan is not included. <laughs> I you know, I said, Kuwait, no, not included. Because I said, why am I even singing this song? I said, Jesus, anywhere you send me, I will go. I'm ready to go anywhere. So I was like, but Jesus, you know the countries that I don't want to go, right? Afghanistan, Kuwait. I was just mentioning some countries. I said, but then this song is not complete. Why am I singing anywhere you send me, I will go. But that's how serious I, I am with God. I could go to a place for just one person. I went to Indonesia for Mima, right? One lady, and I found out there were other ladies that watched me there too. I'm not about numbers, I'm about obedience, and that's why you should, that's why God is blessing me like this. I went to Columbus, I didn't know anybody. I didn't even have a place. But now, <laughs> I know a lot of people. My members, even some of you, you are about to move to. I'm very comfortable there, blessed. Do you know even my neighbors talk about me and I didn't even know? One of my neighbors came to the house. It was knocking and one of my workers went out. And he was saying, he, he said he hoped, he, hoped he, was, he was going to meet me. That him and the neighbor across, they were talking about me that one of his co-workers said they know me, I'm a great woman of God. And that they were talking about me saying they're happy that a great woman of God lives in that neighborhood. I didn't even know. Mommy, that's the neighbor, like when you're coming into the, the third house. Mm -hmm. The man. He said that him and the neighbor across the street were talking about me that I'm a great woman of God. That they are happy that a great woman of God is living there. And then they see my members sometimes, you know, when they come, we're traveling. But I've never met them to talk to them. But they are talking about me. I don't come outside. I could be in my house for one month. I'll only come outside one day to take breeze and go back in. Unless I'm traveling. So I know the work that I put in. And so when I see people who work, I know them. And when I see people who just talk, I know them. Prophet T.B. Joshua, he was not just a talker, he was walking. Work. Do you know sometimes the guy used to fast? You see his face is looking all sh like. Sh when he told me I miss you, I said I know. Like we're related somewhere in the spirit. When I saw that persecution, I said, Father, the man is already dead. Why are they still doing all this? I said, is this how it will happen when I die and go? They'll still be making videos about me, calling me all these things. <laughs> See, today they say things about Jesus, you know that? Right? Right? Even in the Bible, some people believe that his disciples went and took his body. They say, See, today they still believe that. They don't believe he rose from the dead. So if they did that to him, who are we? But when he don't read, 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 they will come looking for us. I have never begged. Me, I know, go suffer. I know, go beg for bread. God of miracle, now my papa. Oh. God of miracle, now my papa. Oh. God of miracle, now my papa. God gave me that song in a dream. He gave me the mic, gold mic. I took it. I started sharing my dreams that I had in that dream. And I was singing that song. He said, if anyone even takes all that I've given you, that same day I'll give you double. I walk with confidence. I am very powerful. I, 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 it's like, I'm never afraid of anything. I just walk with confidence, knowing that I have angels, Jesus, Holy Spirit, all of them walking with me. So you may see me walking alone, but I'm not alone. Even Jesus said it. He's not very alone. His father has not left him because he's always doing the things that please him. And that's how I am too. So whether you like me or not, heaven loves me. Heaven is, so, is in support of me. Do you know how much I just gave here as you were dancing? 
Isn't it four thousand dollars? The hundred dollar bills. Madam, come. You be woman or gay? Gay church. Have you ever given four thousand to your members before? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Just because they are dancing. I need four thousand. <laughs> I think she was going to say something to make us laugh. No, no, no. You have a church. Yes. 4,000. Mm -mm. I need the money. I give my dad almost six or five or four, my mom. Yeah, but I do this all the time. Right. Have you ever thought of this? I know you have. Because you know, you know how this thing, you know the way I do it. Like, I, I actually do wonder how. Like, how does the money never run dry? And is the reason why... You know, when I came over to um, Ohio for your birthday, I, I knew I had to sow into your life. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's the reason why I went ahead to do that. And I sowed a heavy seed because I, I need and this change. grace. <laughs> I need the this grace. Is yes, yes. Yeah, like mm. she's a pastor. She runs a church every Sunday. Yes, every Sunday. So you never even give 4,000. But I just gave four <laughs> here. And tomorrow I'm going to give again. <laughs> And in, in London, how much did we give? We had all the money. Do you know in London when I was in the room, I said, how come I still have money left? I have almost 2,000 left. I said, Alexis, did I not tell you? I said, I'm not supposed to come back with money. I'm supposed to give it up. Not knowing I was doing a worship experience. And I gave them that came the money. Even the workers that worked in the church that I already paid for. I blessed them. This thing is not come on. It's not a one-time thing. I've done it for years. Right? Thank you, my darling. So I know what I put into this. When you go everywhere you find you don't see, you go come back to me. When you go, they charge you. Come, sweetie. You have this beautiful t-shirt. I know you have a lot because you've been to so many programs. This is a grandma here. Somebody clap for her. She looks so young, but she's actually a grandma. How many of these t-shirts you got? Maybe four or more. Colored ones too. Yes, yes, with the colored ones too. The dresses, how many? Oh, I can't count the dresses. About 10, right? Because you come to a lot of programs. Yes. Have I ever given you a wig? But you've gotten other beautiful dresses. Yes. So when you leave and you go to a church and this dress, this t-shirt is $50. Somebody say you go run. I will not buy it. No, no. If you say, I don't want that woman again, I'm leaving. And they're like, come and buy our ministry shirt. And then, 50. Who would you think of first? You. You cannot leave. Something will remind you of me. And then not only that, they say, okay, we're going to give you guys food today. Everybody bring $20, $20. No, because here I get free Alfredo. <laughs> 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 and you even eat extra. We say, who still wants more? Yes, that's that's me. I always ask for extra. Now on my own, um, I go to um, the, the Italian restaurants. I say, oh, let me think of a, about um, a, a puzzle today. Then I order, and I've never done that before. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> also, what did you say? I said, you are a blessing to us. Like you were talking just now, it's like, God just remind me, when you announce about, here about you coming to Houston, something in me was just torment that I have. To, it took me like three days looking for a ticket, trying to get a cheaper one, I can't. Even for the hotel, I have to message man of God, I want to look for roommates, I want to, I said, no, no matter how it costs me, I have to be here. I don't know why. That's what I said that, even coming, God leads people to come. And you've come, you've danced. Mama, the mama danced. You had fun. It's different from being at home. At home, that's true. It's at home, you would dance, but it's not the same. That's right. Even the wave. When you're waving, I'll go on the TV and then I'll put my face on the thing, but it's not the same. <laughs> you actually put your, like you put your face on the screen. My face on the screen. I try to so, oh, finally. Let her hand come near. <laughs> yes, I do that. I've done that a couple of times. And you watch at work because you're, you work in a hospital. Oh, yes. I, work at, I, I, I watch sometimes 
when you're laughing, when you say it's not, I'll be laughing to myself. Talk, then be that I'm not supposed to use phone. I have my earpiece. I'll forget, I'll forget that I'm at work. And I'll be laughing, talking about that. Then the boss will be like, what, what's going on? I said, oh, I just thought about something. It's a lie over work. Wow. It will be like so random, funny. If, I, if you're not on or I don't have anything to watch, sometimes I have to go look for old, old videos. Honestly, Apostle, if I don't listen to you at work, my day don't go too good. Did you hear that? It's like hearing God's voice daily. Exactly. Even when I'm sleeping every night, my children, my grandchildren, they know that that TV is on all night with you on. I remember one time I did deliverance on you. You were having fear in your own house. Yes, I was. Like, you would just stay in your room all day? Yes. A grandma. And then after the prayer, oh, the fear was gone. Somebody clap for Jesus. Right now, my children are coming, calling me a great prayer, prayer warrior because I go around and pray for them in their homes and everything. I do that. One time, I have the feeling I have to go out and talk. I have to go to my daughter's house and that I have to anoint the world. I use your video. I listen to it. And then I start, start anointing the world everywhere in the house. After that, boom, it's like I did something in their coven. So now God is even using you. Yes, apostle. I can. Before, nothing like that? No. And you're a grandma. Yes, I am. I'm a grandma. <laughs> You got to know God closer and everything got your deliverance at, at the comfort of your home. Yes. Somebody clap for Jesus Christ. Thank you, my darling. You are blessed. This ministry is a blessing. God put me online for a reason. All these programs I do is fun, but my real ministry is online. Even now, we are live online. Because there are many people to reach online. People from all over the world. That's why I can walk into any country and I have people there. So to God be the glory. Jesus is here, blended in me. And if you're here, you're not saved. You're wasting time. All this thing I'm doing, if you don't repent, we just wasted time. In fact, everybody in this room, if you just take a few, like 30 seconds and just talk to God and just ask for mercy. If there's anything you've done, because I want to wave at you, but I don't want anything to block. Lord, I'm sorry if I've sinned against you knowingly or knowingly. Please forgive me. Sometimes we sin in our thoughts, in what we say. Sometimes we don't even know. Even those online, because we're about to round up. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. You want to have a relationship with God? You need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You need to make him the Lord of your life. So if you're ready to make him your Lord, your Savior, say the salvation prayer after me. Even those online, say, Father, Lord, I come into your presence as a sinner. I confess all my sins. Please forgive me. I didn't know any better. I promise not to go back to my old ways. I believe that Jesus Christ came and died for me on the cross of Calvary so that my sins can be wiped away. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Be the Lord over my life. I promise to serve you forever and ever in Jesus' name. Put your hand on your chest. Tell yourself, I am saved. See how easy it was? Jesus has paid the price. He has made it so easy. We don't have to do too much. Just accept him. Believe in your heart. And that's it. You are saved. Welcome to the body of Christ. Go and sin no more. Read your Bible. Pray daily. And stop doing those things you used to do. While I was leading you to Christ, Jesus reminded me of how much I had. Because I said 4,000. But he reminded me that I paid the Uber driver 200 from it. And gave him $40 to him. So it was 3,800. You see how the spirit of truth follows me? He will remind me. He will correct me. So I don't even tell a lie. 
Somebody clap for Jesus. It was $3,800 because she went to the ATM to get all this money, right? And I was like, oh, Lord, thank you for reminding me. I forgot about the Uber driver. Give him $200 bill and $240 bill. I want to wave at people now. But let me tell you how this wave came about. I had a dream. Somebody said, Apostle had a dream. This was like months ago. And in this dream, there was a church and this man walked into the church. I am not feeling well. I'm sick. I don't feel well. He was shouting. And everybody in the church got up and started praying for him. It was worse. And I was outside the church, but I could see what was inside. And I said, why didn't he come to me? But that was Jesus Christ using my face. And then I saw his tongue coming out. But it was snake. The head of a snake. It was like... Duh, 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 duh. So in other words, God was showing me the reason why he was not feeling well. The affliction. It was a serpentine spirit. I am not feeling well. So everybody in the church got up. Nothing. He was getting worse. And then they had their bishop sitting. He had this black long robe with this color thing. He got up. Like he doesn't get up, but when he gets up, things happen, right? That's how it's supposed to be. When he got up, see, by the power of, I think he said invested, but me, I thought I heard rested on me. When he did that, the guy was even shouting, I am not feeling well. It was not working. But I knew the cause of it because I saw the spirit. So I walked into the church. And once I walked in, another lady from nowhere came and said, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. That's Mark chapter 1, when the demon was manifesting. When I entered, I just did come out. I didn't even say the name of Jesus because that was Jesus himself doing it. But I was seeing it as me because Jesus will show us things in a dream and when we wake up, we have to do it. And I will see a white smoke come off their face when I wave. And she fell vomiting. And then the man, I just did come out. The same thing, I fell. And I walked out of the church. I didn't stay. As I was walking out, the door, the guy by the door, the security said, Woman oh of God, I think I have it too. I said, what? He said, I think it's from something I ate. I said, come out. And the white smoke will come off his face. That's the demon, the affliction. And he threw up inside the camp near him. And when I came out, there was a long line of people. The line never ended. They were like, I'm going to go, please, 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 please. I would just be doing, come out, come out, come out. And that's how I walk. And when I woke up, God told me, that's how I'm going to be praying for people from now on. I started it with my Columbus, Ohio ones. We even have a video. I don't know if you guys watched that. And that's how I've been doing it. It was in Kenya I went to January that I dreamt that I was doing it twice. So now I don't just do it once. I can do two, three, whatever. Like I remember before coming here, come son. Um, I was sitting on God's chair, my son came. I told him to come, let me wave at him. So I waved, but I started calling out many things. When I call one thing out, he did like this. His face changed. When I finish, I said, wow, your face changed. You said, no. His face has been the same since he came here. Wait, isn't that what he told me? Yeah, basically. He, he was like this, but when I call one of these things, he doesn't remember that. This wave is so powerful. Thank you, son. There was a lady that you guys know her testimony in Connecticut three, four weeks ago. I waved at her. The demon said, Belema, why are you shaming me here? Oh, I like that one, that deliverance. That woman has suffered, she's a nurse, but all oh, her money tied up everywhere. After that deliverance, she said money was coming from everywhere. For my job, whatever. IRS sent her a check for 34,000 and some change. She said this is money they say she had paid, she, she owed them in 2000, was it 2014 or I don't remember the year. Only for them to now check and saw that she overpaid. And they said, 
Do you know what $34,000 is? In fact, a few days ago, she said, but woman of God, I have another testimony that will make you angry. The whole QBM laugh. She said, I just did a recent transaction and the, the company sent me a card of my money that they overcharged me for one cent. <laughs> she said, I noticed that even the small money, they don't want to owe me. They sent her a credit card with her money that she overpaid. One cent. She showed me the card. The statement said one cent. So, woman of God, it seems like the devil doesn't want to touch my money again. My money is coming from everywhere. I was laughing. I'll tell her to do a video of that one. She said, this will make all of you laugh. She said, money is coming from everywhere. It was just one wave. I went to London a few days ago. A man said, every time he eats, he sweats. After the wave. You guys saw his testimony? No sweating. Another woman had not seen her period for over a year after the wave. The next day or so, she went to the, her period came. Another man said he has not been sleeping for seven months. After the wave, he slept so well. And then even the next wave, he sees something do boom out of him or something. And he said he couldn't walk when he wakes up. But his wife watched him walk. So many testimonies, just a wave. But I know what was coming off of their face. So I want everybody to line up on that side. Let's do day one wave. The camera, I don't know what angle you'll be showing. Which angle, which is better? Just stand over there. Where are my two ushers? Are they still here? Okay. Uh-uh. Tell me, Kim. Tell me. Tell me you came. Hmm. <laughs> Tell me, you, you won't leave Houston people to enjoy their program. You came today. Yes, Queen, I did. God said you had to come. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Yes. Last minute. Last minute. <sighs> you didn't tell me you were coming. Uh, well. She told you, Alexis, you didn't tell me. All right, so just stand by the corners there. Don't block the camera in case they fall. No, 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 not too far. Just so that you can grab them. Come on, sweetie. Because this is pure concrete. You've never received it or you have? You've been hungry for this. I want to see how the camera is showing it. It's blocking me. There's no other angle from the side. Who is switching the camera? Where is Talkback? Let's see if there's a side angle. I don't like that. It blocks me. There has to be another angle. I don't like this one. I see. No. I like this place, but the camera angle, I don't like. There has to be another camera angle. We have our phone, but I still need a better angle. Huh? You say what? You can try? I just want the side shot so that they can see it from the side. We need to switch from the side. We got to get it right so they can see their face. Or... There's one camera that comes from this corner. Online, we want to make sure you guys see it well. All right. Is your heart beating fast? You're calm. Okay. We need a better angle for this. It's just showing their back and they are blocking me. There has to be another angle. Okay, this one is not bad. Is this good? It could be better, but we can, we can work with this. All right, just relax. Thank you, Lord, for bringing me to Houston, Texas. Thank you, Jesus. Keyboard is come back now. Right? Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Hold up. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus. Now, she would not even know what made her fall. But I told you guys, I see a smoke come out. She's shaking. Her hand is shaking. Phone, come on. I don't think their camera sees that. We could be switching angles now. 
time. I wish their cameras can move. Don't worry, we'll show you guys a video from the phone. What's happening to you, sweetie? Come and see your wife. Oh. See what's happening to your wife. She was just shaking. What happened to you? I just felt weak, very weak. Come on, something came out of you. You are free. And suddenly you're so weak. You feel so weak, like you have to sit down. Like something left and then I just felt just weak. You just dropped. Yes. Did you expect anything to happen? No. <laughs> You're shocked. Yes, I am. But I was really waiting for this wave. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. I'm so happy. Thank you, Jesus. And this is just this is just day one. You're here tomorrow too. All right, so tomorrow you'll get your wave. Husband, come. Just when you come, just, in fact, I always teach them in the line, they say, today I will get all my deliverance. So tell yourself that. Come to me. Remove your glasses. Hold this glass for him. Just relax. Huh? Put your hand out. Relax. Come out of him. Out. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What happened? I just feel um, a little bit lightheaded. Like you're about to fall? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit lightheaded. Yeah. So you have to sit. God bless you. Come on. Relax. You came all the way from Dallas. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Relax. Oh, this is a woman that I knew since 2000 and it's been a long time. Madame Delu. Yes. Oh, wow, you remember my name? I remember you. You knew me for so many years. 2000 and what? More than, uh, Over 20 years. No, 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 no. Yeah, about 20 years. How you feel seeing me as a woman of God? Oh, Jesus. I see a lot. The transformation is, I just have to keep following you because from the day I knew you would be the way in that life and I knew we did business we traveled together to Dallas and um, I, I see you making a comment from the beginning I followed you from the beginning because you are listening to the uh, to radio um, FM 107 and 105.7 and then you listen to um, uh, all those Christian radio you follow me and listen and then you, 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 you wrote a message I will never forget you said look at this message I had in this radio it's like he's even talking to me. Look at this religious uh, man of God talking like he's talking to me. So you've been following, following, following from 2016? Yes. And this time you say you must come to the program. I said I must come. I even wrote... Yeah, um, I saw your comment. I saw. From how do I, you know, then I, I saw the flyer and then I... I wasn't even supposed to come because I had uh, at my business, I have some two people that I'm supposed to interview on, online. But then... They even canceled it. I'm like, I said, I'm not going to make it today because of this interview. But then both of them canceled. I said, yes, Jesus. Then I said, let me go and uh, ask my daughter-in-law because I don't have a car, but, you know, I use their car. So I said, please, I need to go to this woman of God. But, you know, a lot of people will be like, you are going to her? I said, yes. Are you following her? And then I keep hearing. I said, you must hear her. Because this girl, I know her from the time she was like, you know, nobody. Like she has been she's the organizer of all parties. I, I, I also go to parties and meet her. And if she's coming, if, if, the, if they don't come to the party, the, the party will not start. But once they entered, the whole place changed. She comes with her group. I know her very well. And I, I, I also, from following you, sometimes I sleep. I dreamt about you before. I moved to Nigeria. So I, I always follow you. So one day I was listening to you and I fell asleep because it was night and then it was time you are doing your preaching. Then I, I saw you, like you are talking to me. But I, I, I don't remember exactly what you are saying, but I know it's about God. Then, you know, following you make me to be stronger and stronger. And I said, I must follow this Jesus by whatever it takes. I've been a Christian. I've been a Christian for a long time. I know I've been in sin and everything. 
but I changed. And I, and I want, I, I, I told my daughter, I said, I have to come. You know, I want to be in the presence of where they was worshiping and just doing everything about God. That's why I, I just came. I said, I'm late, but I must come. Even if it's just one hour. Somebody clap for Jesus. Mommy, remember I sent you a screenshot. That's the lady. I sent you a screenshot of a lady in Houston. That's her. She knew me for a long time. I think I was still in university or Houston when you knew me, Chai. I'm so happy to see you. Come on now. Because you believe you will receive. Just relax. Close your eyes. Come out of her. Out. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Come on. Relax. Relax. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Leave her. If she's just going back, leave her. Come. Come on, sweetie. Come close to me. Close your eyes. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come quicker, everybody. Close your eyes. Put your hand down. Come out. Out of him. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Move your glasses. Give it to her. Relax. Don't think of anything. Just relax. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Leave her. Come on. Close your eyes. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Leave her. Leave her. If she wants to fall, you catch her. Just leave her now. Come. What happened? Like something was shaking. Something was shaking. Shaking. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How do you feel now? Uh, Somebody clap for Jesus. She's crying. You are free. Come on. Come on, son. Close your eyes. Come out of him. The spirit of madness. Come out in the name of Jesus. Out in Jesus' name. Go ahead. Close your eyes. Relax. Just relax. Take a deep breath. Come out of her. Out. In the name of Jesus. Liba. 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 Come on. Relax. Come out of her. Out. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Out. In the name of Jesus. Liba. Relax. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. You are blessed. Just relax. Come closer. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Leave her. Come on. Relax. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Come. Close your eyes. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Good. Yes. Don't block the phone. It has to come out. Come on. Relax. Come out. Out of him. In the name of Jesus. Just relax, really. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Take off your glasses. Out of her, in the name of Jesus. Come, you said, mm, come on. What happened? You said, mm. I was hearing voices. What was the voice? What did it say? I don't, well, I was saying bad stuff. Just now, you just heard it. I was saying things that are not of God. Come, relax. Relax, close your eyes. Where's your mom? Did you hear that? Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. What happened this time? I feel a little force. A force. Come to push you back. You are free. You say what? Come. So she goes through a lot? Yeah, it's been happening for days now. Because she started seeing like she had an encounter with Jesus and everything. 
um, all of a sudden it's like this, an attack on her, trying to reverse whatever she was told, showing her something else other than that. So I told her we have to believe. So she started seeing monsters. Green stuff. And marine stuff. But now you're fine, you are free. You say what? I, I used to like them, but not anymore. Amen, you are free. Wow, come sweetie. Relax. Come out. Out, in the name of Jesus. Come on. Relax, put your hand down. This is delight, put your hand down. Relax, take a deep breath. Close your eyes. Come out. Out of her, in the name of Jesus. Leave her. Okay, catch her. Good. Go. Come. Relax. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Go. Come. Close your eyes, Mama. Close your eyes. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Come on, sweetie. Come out, out of her, in the name of Jesus. Relax with your hand. Release your hand. Come out, out of her, in the name of Jesus. Come out, out of him, in the name of Jesus. Relax. Come out, out of him, in the name of Jesus. Come out, out of her, in the name of Jesus. Relax, close your eyes, mama. Come out, out of her, in the name of Jesus. Just relax. Thank you, Lord. Come out, out of her, in the name of Jesus. Come on. Close your eyes, come out. Out of her, in the name of Jesus. Relax, put your hand. Raise your head up. Come out of her. Out, in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come out. Out of her, in the name of Jesus. Relax. Come out. Out of her, in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, son. Close your eyes. Come out. Come on. Out of him. Out, in the name of Jesus. Come out, out of her. Carry the baby, in the name of Jesus. Relax. Come out, out of her, in the name of Jesus. Hold her. Somebody clap for Jesus. All right, Usher, come with me, do your own. Relax. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Relax. Come out. Out of her. In the name of Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus. How's everybody feeling? You feel different. Like you, you are like, you're still feeling like, wow. What is this feeling like? Some, somebody help. What's she doing? Is she vomiting, coughing, burping? She's burping. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to say bye bye. Oh, a share. Hey. We just want to say bye bye. Oh, a share. By tomorrow, a bunch of you will come with testimonies and you receive another wave tomorrow. God gave you two days. In London, it was three days. Some places I go will be one day. Somebody clap for God for giving you two days. Come, sweetie, come here. 
what happened? I, I don't know. When I got here, I told God, this is my time. And when you waved on me, Wait, I just started is, it, is that mic on? I uh -huh. felt this chill go down my body. And then you were buffing, coughing? Coughing. Yeah? Coughing. And how do you feel now? I feel weak. <laughs> You're still coughing. You feel weak. You are free. Thank God we took your baby to hold your baby. And you're coming tomorrow too. Yes. So you'll get another round of it. Somebody clap for Jesus. Come on, let's stand up and just thank God because we're about to go. Oh, I just want to say bye-bye. I should. I just want to say bye-bye. I just want to say, I just want to say, Baba, oh, I just want to say, Baba, oh, Oshay. Let's just use 30 seconds and thank God for this Holy Ghost encounter in Houston. Thank Him for the messages, the wave. The dance, the praise, the worship, the blessings for everything, the fellowship. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We adore you. Thank you for these Holy Ghost encounters. And even as we go home, Father, go with us in the name of Jesus. And bring us back safely tomorrow with lots of testimonies. And everyone that is meant to be here, Father, bring them safely. Even those that are watching online, Father, let them receive their own wave too as they watch. In Jesus' mighty name, I seal everything you have received here with the blood of Jesus. From today, it will be blessings upon blessings. No more attacks. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. Let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Jesus' name, amen. Surely, goodness, goodness and mercy, mercy shall follow us all, all the days of our lives, lives and, and we, we shall dwell, dwell in the house, house of the Lord, of the Lord forever, forever and ever. And amen. ever. Amen. For if you have your offering here, you can bring it here. Otherwise, you can give it on cash app or paper. Even those online, you know how we do it. And tomorrow, we'll be here from 2 to 8. It's 8 o'clock already, so we have to go now. And we'll see you tomorrow, Sunday. All right, I love you guys. Those of you online, you are blessed. It is well with you. Somebody clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you guys. Bye-bye online. See you tomorrow.